Commission meeting, March 20th, 2012. Before we start, uh, I am requesting all cell phones and electronic devices be turned off or in a mute position as not disturb the meeting. Any member of the public also has a right to make an audio or video recording of an open session of a public meeting. Member of the public who wishes to record a meeting must first notify the chair and must comply with reasonable requirements regarding audio or video equipment established by the chair so as not to interfere with the meeting. The chair is required to inform other attendees of such recording at the beginning of the meeting. No one at this time has requested uh, audio or video. Um, call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mrs. Winslow. Mrs. Begley, Mr. Cruz, and Mr. Holmes, as well as Mr. Andrews is present. Thank you, any announcements? Announcements, uh, I just received this in from uh, announcement, move way him forward in conjunction with Suffolk University is pleased to announce a community forum on March 26, 2012, at Wareham Memorial Town Hall Auditorium from 7 to 9. And there'll be, uh, without reading the whole thing, uh, students under Professor Michael Lavin, PhD, are currently working towards their master's degree in public administration. They are studying program evaluation and public policy. As part of their credit coursework, the students have agreed to moderate a forum and question candidates for Wareham uh, Board of Selectmen, School Committee, and Public Offices. And that's March 26, 7 to 9 in the Town Hall Auditorium. Spring is in the air, and we've all witnessed that now over the last couple days. I saw this uh, from Tony Village and just couldn't resist. Uh, uh, they'll be having an annual Easter egg hunt um, on March 31st from 10 at 10 a.m. Um, and it's five dollars uh, per child. Uh, there are many other events for the spring, but I wanted to read that one. There's too many of them to read, uh, but spring is in the air, and I thought we a little Easter egg hunt would be nice for the announcements tonight. I also ran across one that was interesting because of the weather. Um, and it's for a car enthusiast. Um, every Thursday from 5.30 p.m. in the evening, uh, there will be car, a uh, car gathering, auto gathering. Um, and that's uh, here at AJW Performance. Uh, they'll have fun-filled gatherings in a laid-back setting, free food. Uh, they'll also be planning, um, what do you call those, uh, rides where they drive around. And that's at 16 Kendrick Road in Wareham. That's going to be every Thursday at uh, starting at 5.30 p.m. Hang on. Looks like I got these. They came out backwards on my packet here. On March 24th from 10 a.m., to 4 p.m., uh, Habitat uh, for Humanity, Buzzards Bay, uh, will host a home and garden show at Tabor Academy. And again, that's March 24th from 10 to 4 at uh, Tabor Academy. Um, the 20th Annual Boys and Girls Club Basketball Challenge uh, will be held on March 23rd uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. And this is going to be held at the Boys and Girls Club in New Bedford. Um, so we don't get messed up here. It's uh, Admission is $5 for adults, $3 for students, and $2 uh, for children. Now this event also supports the Boys and Girls Club of Wareham. And they will be... Um, It'll be uh, boys and girls basketball, all-stars. Uh, will be several uh, youth from Wareham represented here. Um, they have raffles and things. Um, so, again, that's uh, March 23rd from 6 to 9 p.m. Now, we'd be remiss at this point if I didn't mention um, we missed it last week, and that's my fault being rushed. 
but a really huge kudo to the young men of our basketball team who are the section uh, three champions. Um, we made it to the uh, Boston Garden in the semifinals and lost the game, but our kids uh, played tremendous all year in an undefeated season uh, for uh, Coach Bajoli and his team. Um, and we're very proud of their um, their achievements over the last year. Um, the last one, and this is a good one uh, because uh, I'll allude to that in a second, but on March 24th, uh, from 8 to 12 a.m. at the onset uh, VFW is a blues extravaganza. Um, and this money will be used to uh, to support the uh, you know, the uh, Blues Festival in the summer. And actually, uh, Gil will be here, Gil Career. Um, as many of you know, Gil, Gil's band was signed to a, um, to a recording contract. So it's great to have somebody from Wareham on the national stage, and they will be here um, at this extravaganza. And again, the doors open at 7, um, and music is from 8 to midnight, and that's uh, uh, March 24th at the onset VFW. Tickets, where were they? Uh, tickets are $15. Uh, the music is from 8 to midnight, and tickets are available at the door. So uh, that's all I got. Mrs. Winslow? I don't have anything. Mrs. Begley? Mr. Cruz? No, I don't. Yes? No. Nope. Oh, Mr. That's Andrews? It. That concludes the announcements, Mr. Chairman. Okay, this time, citizen participation. Start on the right-hand side. Up first. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Um, board, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Andrews. My name is Emmett Johar. I'm running, actually, for the two-year seat. I uh, live at 3150 Cranberry Highway. Um, I'm here for two reasons today. One is... <coughs> uh, related to the current town administrator. Um, as you all know, I'm running for the two-year seat. Uh, one of the things I'm doing is uh, knocking on a lot of doors and meeting a lot of residents in Wareham. There's two things that keep coming up, two themes that keep, keep on coming up over and over. <coughs> and that is basically a distrust of our town government that seems to be uh, happening over and over. And secondly, <coughs> when I turned around and asked him about the town administrator, I hear nothing but positive things. And as we all know, that uh, his past work has provided us with positive results. So one thing I'd like to just throw out there today is, I'm not sure, have you guys considered it throwing a counter offer down to retain the talent that we have in town right now? <coughs> and give the next board a chance to work with the town administrator and let the next board make that decision. <coughs> instead, of, um, instead of partisan differences, I really hope we can put them aside and uh, make a decision instead of paralyzing the town of Wareham. Secondly, <coughs> another great distraction. I keep hearing about uh, rumors about my residency issue, and I, I understand there's a formal complaint. So for that, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to formally invite you to my house uh, at 3150 anytime you want. Feel free to come down anytime, and so can the town clerk as well. And uh, before you come, just pick up a six-pack, so it'll make it a little bit better. <coughs> and uh, I hope that uh, we can put, a, put aside these differences and uh, distractions and move on with the real concrete issues that Wareham needs. And Wareham needs. Uh, f that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next. We're going down this side first, so, and then we'll come back on the left, on my left. <laughs> You're all right, my left. Thank you, good evening, Sandy Slavin. Um, I just want to let the town know the Litter Mob is hitting Minot Ave on Sunday at 10 o'clock. We're meeting at the Minot Forest School, and if enough show up, we'll be able to hit Narrows Road, which is looking pretty bad. So Sunday, 10 o'clock, Minot School, Mob is hitting um, Minot Ave. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I apologize to Mr. Buckman. Buckminster. He sent me that, and I forgot to print it off.
Good evening, Susan Rickey. I'm precinct two. This is going to be very difficult for me. I'm going to tell you up front. But four days ago on Saturday, shock waves spread through this town with the news that we lost one of the best and admired town administrators that ever held that office in the last two decades. And I speak for many, many people. And I am thanking him for his dedication, his untiring work, and his accomplishments. We lost him not because of any incompetence or mismanagement on his part, but because members of this board, and we know who we are, not only kept throwing roadblocks in his way, but kept procrastinating in voting to extend or not to extend his contract, dangling the carrot of a contract extension as a means of trying to influence his efforts to improve this town stinks of the worst kind of political gamesmanship, and no one can blame Mr. Andrews for wanting to leave. Wherever I go, I hear the same comment, that the political environment in Wareham has become so toxic that it will be difficult to attract qualified people to work here. This will continue to be a sad time for Wareham unless we can put aside our differences, stop spewing venom on the blogs, and find a common goal for the direction of our town. We have many people here who are very qualified. I don't know why they don't get along. I don't know why you can't see the writing on the wall. We just lost the opportunity of getting a grant in this town because of the fact that we didn't have, and it was nothing that you people knew about. It was people that were working to try to bring some money into this town because they didn't have a, a confidence on, on, the, on the administration uh, given what happened this past weekend, unfortunate. So we have to move ahead. I would like to even think that this could be reconsidered, but I doubt very much because of the circumstances. And I, I feel very badly. I want to thank you, Mr. Andrews, for all your, your effort in trying to make this a turnaround community. Uh, community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll start on the Mr. Mr. Chairman, we have a, uh, a hearing at 7.15. OK. So we will continue it right after the hearing. We have a 715 hearing. Need a motion? I make a motion that we open the um, public hearing uh, to consider the application for uh, Bay Point uh, Country Club. We have a change of hour. I don't think this other stuff is on there. No, oh, it is, it's actually. Just the one. Just the one. The, uh, I think it's Bay just the first one we need yes. to do. Is that you made a motion? Motion yeah. made? Second. Bay Point. Uh, M motions here. Motion made by Kara. Steve made the motion. He made he made Se the motion. And second I by seconded it. Kara. Okay. Oh, you're right up on it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Four Good zero evening. zero. Good evening. You could introduce yourself. You're going to have to speak right on top of that. Mike, introduce yourself. My name is Sean Crump. I am the president of Stone Street Hospitality Corporation, one of the owners, the new owners of Bay Point Country Club. And thank you very much for taking the time to do this this evening. And the issue tonight is uh, the application. This is for a transfer of license from Digital Federal Credit Union doing business as Bay Point Country Club to Bay Point Club, LLC, Sean Crump Manager, 19 Bay Point Drive, onset under the provisions of Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Law. Two, public amusement license on weekdays for dancing and live entertainment under the provisions of Chapter 140 of Massachusetts General Law, and three, public entertainment on Sunday license for dancing and live entertainment under the provisions of Chapter 136 of Massachusetts General Law. Any questions from the board? I don't see a manager listed here. Who's the manager? That would be me. Mm -hmm. So this license is for seven days a week? 
Correct. 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Correct. Will you be serving food during that time? Not till 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. Our plans for the kitchen are going to probably time-wise be seasonal-based, but mm -hmm. till that 10, 11 o'clock time period. We've made uh, significant uh, changes and improvements to the club in the last five weeks mm -hmm. and uh, intend on having a, an a la carte restaurant there. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Begley? Not at this time, Mr. Cruz. Mrs. Winslow? I don't have any questions, Mr. Cruz. Mr. Holmes? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, thank you uh, through you to uh, Sean. Um, which building is this for? That's for the clubhouse building. Mm -hmm. The lower building. Yes. What kind of entertainment would they have in that building? Dancing, live dancing? Right. We, we have applied for a license in anticipation of things like golf outings or events that may call for entertainment, but it will not be a daily occurrence. You want to elaborate on anything before I ask uh, if anybody opposes, for or against? Anything from the public? Okay. I'll come up and address. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Thanks for uh, listening. Just a couple of quick questions for the, for the applicant. Um, you're going to have liquor in the, in the clubhouse. Is there liquor served anywhere else down there? There'll be liquor served in the clubhouse. There's a second license, which uh, Digital uh, Federal Credit Union is still waiting on a response from ABCC for the pavilion build, building up above. Okay. So how does that stand, Mr. Chairman, that, that second license? We don't, have we don't have anything on that yet. Nothing. So, okay. so you, can't, you, you can't serve anything up there? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, and just out of curiosity for the dinner, is it, it's going to be seven nights a week up until 9 or 10 o'clock? Right. The kitchen will be open until about that time. Okay. Um, well, if you could just maybe get the hours out to the public for, for everything again would be good, Mr. Chairman. Thanks. Okay. Want to, uh, any other questions from the public? Anybody for or against? <laughs> You're for it, okay. I'm for it. For it. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> I think we all need that. <laughs> Do you bring any food samples with them, Mr. Chairman? To to <laughs> so you want to elaborate on your hours to make sure everybody yeah, gets it? Yeah, if I could advertise a little mm -hmm. bit, that'd be yep. great. Uh, we, we hired a terrific chef. Um, he... Uh, <laughs> is very skilled. I, I have owned and operated a number of uh, uh, restaurants in the Cape Cod area, and I think the team that we have down there is fantastic. It's going to be a little bit different than what was there before. If the community hasn't driven by, you'll see we have a football team worth of people um, kind of going through the property right now and making improvements uh, both to the golf course but also to improve the dining and banquet experience. There's an on-site uh, sales team, uh, two, essentially two new kitchens, and uh, the dining space has been dramatically improved. So I kind of see this as a new restaurant for the community. We welcome everybody to come down and, and, and give it a try, and it's uh, uh, really a great group of uh, guys and girls that are going to try to make it work. So I appreciate whatever the town is going to do to help us out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait. Mr. Begley? Uh, when do you plan on opening? 
Right now, our current the, the uh, opening of the golf course and the restaurant is currently scheduled for April 13th. The, um, the building up top, which uh, has always been known as the pavilion, I think is going to be a little bit more time. Um, we were making pretty dramatic improvements to that building. Uh, our first event right now um, up above without a liquor license in hand is scheduled for mid-May. So we're hoping to get the liquor license up there as well. Any other question for the board? And Sean, you do realize it's Friday the 13th. <coughs> Saturday the 14th. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we talked about opening the 13th. I can't do it. <laughs> Any other question from the board? If not, uh, make a motion that we close okay. the hearing. Right. Second. Motion to close by Steve, second by Kara. Questions? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Four, four zero zero. I make a motion that uh, we approve the application for the transfer of license from Digital Federal Credit Union to a business as Bay Point Country Club to Bay Point Club, LLC, Sean Crump, manager, 19 Bay Point Drive, onset under the provisions of Chapter 138 of Massachusetts General Law. And two, public amusement license on weekdays for dancing and live entertainment under the provisions of Chapter 140 of Massachusetts General Law. And three, public entertainment on Sunday license for dancing and live entertainment under the provisions of Chapter 136 of the Massachusetts General Law. Second. Motion made and second. Any other questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Four zero zero. Now we will zoom. Oh, thank, you thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, at this time we will resume the citizen participation. I think we was on the left side. Hi, Ann Eisenmenger, Kermeset Road, and um, founder, owner, and publisher of Wareham Week. As I told you all in an email sent this morning, I don't, okay, is this, this better? Okay, you can tell I've never done this before. Um, and as I told you all in an email message this morning, I don't really want to be here. Um, I've always believed that the, um, the news media should be covering the story, not be the story. But I honestly don't know where else to turn. I was notified yesterday of a decision that not only hits us in the pocketbook, but it guarantees that most residents of Wareham will never see the warrant for the Springtown meeting. And as they say in the, the news business, you know, three times a trend, and it's the third time that the, that the largest circulation newspaper by far, like three times the nearest competitor in Wareham, has come out on the, the losing end of a decision t for legal advertising, from, for large volume legal advertising from the town of Wareham. There's been an award to the high bidder, an award to the low bidder, and an award without any bid. And we were out in all, in all three cases. You know, it's like trying to play baseball when the rules change every inning. Um, there is no fair and transparent process that I can see. I've, I've had an email exchange with Mr. Andrews. I've called Mr. Andrews. I've asked to sit down and talk with him, and it hasn't changed the ultimate decision. Um, I would love to have the opportunity to sort of explain the, the specifics of, of what happened, and I'm a I'm more a writer than a speaker, um, and which is that, um, I'll start, Do this is the letter that I sent to Mr. Andrews this morning. Yesterday's communication that the Springtown meeting warrant will be published in the Wareham Courier rather than Wareham Week marks the third successive puzzling, puzzling decision that you have made regarding legal advertising. The first two decisions, which I will describe below, most definitely cost Wareham significantly more money than it should have paid. None of the decisions seems to have been made with the goal of reaching the largest number of Wareham residents. The process itself appears irrational and decidedly non-transparent. Let me be specific. Last fall, Wareham Week and the Courier were asked to submit quotes for publishing the fall town meeting warrant. Wareham Week submitted a substantially lower bid and the explanation that our circulation of 7,000 plus is at least three times out of the Courier. Whether the decision were to be based on best price or best value, the two precepts of any normal competitive bidding process, I was confident that we would be chosen to print the warrant. 
Instead, I was informed that you had chosen to go with the courier. Only after a strenuous protest that the decision violated competitive bidding requirements was the decision made to print the warrant in both papers, paying both the low bidder, Wareham Week, and the high bidder, the courier. Your rationale at the time was that printing in both papers provided the widest possible audience. I question that. Among town residents, there are very few courier subscribers who are not also Wareham Week readers. 7,000 plus Wareham Week copies in a town with 8,000 plus households is darn near close, is darn near 100% penetration. Two, late last year I saw that the town had published its proposed budget in the Courier. At two full pages in the Courier, it was an expensive ad. Plus, the Courier ad was difficult to read. The two pages were printed on separate from each other in different parts of the paper, and there was no cross-reference. I thought it was just one page, and then, whoops, later there's another one. I called your office to inquire why Wareham Week, with its much greater circulation, lower prices, and attention to quality control, was not given an opportunity to bid on the business. You told me that the town would, quote, be fair, unquote, and alternate big jobs between the two newspapers. It seemed an odd procedure for our cash-strapped town, or for any town interested in having the largest number of people see critical public information. But knowing that the next, quote, big job, unquote, was the spring warrant, and anticipating that this would be awarded to Wareham Week based on your rotation system, I didn't press the issue. Three, late last week I was emailed a copy of the spring warrant and asked to bid on the business. That was strange considering your promise that big jobs would be alternated between the two papers and that the previous big job had been awarded to the higher priced, lower circulation paper without being put out to bid. But confident that our best price and vastly larger audience would prevail, we presented a bid at the same rate for the same presentation as we had provided in the past. It's a long warrant, 51 articles, I think, filling seven of our pages. And our bid was for a price of $2,450. Shortly thereafter, I was informed that the courier was the low bidder at $2,081. That's troubling. It takes only a little math to know that Wareham Week is far and away the best value. The courier has not updated its publish published circulation number since before Wareham Week was launched two years ago. Back then, it claimed to have a circulation of 3,200. Our presence had clearly resulted in a reduction in that number. Being generous, let's say they still have 2,000 subscribers, albeit many of them out-of-town male subscribers, who will not be voting at town meeting. Our current Wareham only circulation is, is, is 7,200. Using those numbers and the kind of math you learn in elementary school, their bid comes out to $1 per copy. Wareham Weeks? 34 cents per copy. Furthermore, Wareham Week's legal advertising is designed to be accessible and easy to read for residents of all ages. Knowing the courier's legal advertising rights, I suspect its winning bid was made possible only by reducing type to a size that many Wareham residents will find unreadable. We could do that too, but doesn't that defeat the point of per printing public notices for all to read? We provide value, we provide free of charge accessibility for the maximum number of people in the community, we provide easy reading for the many senior citizens who cannot read itsy bitsy type without a magnifying glass. In addition to abandoning your stated system of alternating the quote big jobs unquote, this latest decision serves neither the public nor the public pocketbook. If there is a method to this madness, I beg you to tell me what it is. As a citizen and taxpayer and straight shooting local business person, I ask that a fair, rational process of selecting a vendor for legal advertising be clearly and publicly defined. Sincerely, Ann Eisenmenger. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Andrews. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could, um, and Ann, thank you for coming because uh, obviously schedules didn't allow us to talk about this, but I know Shirley Oldfield has uh, in the past uh, sought out by the charter uh, the most uh, a, a, a newspaper by circulation by some level of circulation it doesn't prescribe a particular type of circulation it says by circulation um, the, your quote was 400 and some four hundred dollars uh, larger than the quote that the courier provided us with and that has fluctuated over time because at, at certain times mm -hmm. in the past newspapers have come to town and newspapers have gone uh, so I encourage you my my comments were because I know we have done this. We've published uh, a number of uh, ads through our planning department uh, and other departments in town, the uh, town clerk's office. 
Um, so what we have here in place is a, a quotation. It's not a bid, not subject to Chapter 30B. It's under the $5,000 threshold. Uh, and I've provided the board with a response from our staff that you know we'd love to publish as in many newspapers as we can. Um, but we are now using, as we all have been using, uh, the internet. Uh, we also uh, try to get uh, as much uh, information out through, uh, once again, the, the lowest quoted newspaper by circulation. And, and that's really what it's about. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to go to lunch. I'm happy to still go out to lunch with you mm -hmm. if you'd like. But by the same token, um, it, this, this was uh, a quoted uh, price for a project that we had. And once again, in some cases you've won that quote, in some cases you haven't. And this is one of those cases, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do I have any opportunity to say anything in response to that? Or? No, this is not a debate, it's citizen okay. participation. Right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Right. <coughs> thank you, uh, Ron Robinson, um, Oakdale Heights Lane, Wareham. Um, first of all, let me just say I want to thank the uh, Board of Select. I made a couple of notes here because um, usually when I come up, <coughs> I speak off the cuff, and someone told me a few weeks ago, you get better mileage with uh, honey. So I wrote my notes down so I don't um, alienate anyone. Um, <coughs> but basically, I want to thank the Board of Selectmen for allowing me the opportunity to come before the board, um, just, as, just as other people have in the past and that I be treated with the respect, the rights, and the opportunities that everyone else has who's come before this board. Um, first of all, I'd like to just clear, clear something up. There seems to be a misconception out there that, um, about Oakdale and, and the sewer project. You know I'm here about the sewer, I'm here all the time. But anyhow, I just want to say that we, Oak, I wrote this down, we Oakdale residents do not now or have we ever advocated that taxpayers of Wareham um, <clears throat> be burdened with any funds um, that aren't funded um, through any funds available for the uh, sewer project. We've never advocated that any Wareham taxpayer um, reach into their pockets to fund any shortfall that arises as a result of our betterments being lowered to a fair and reasonable amount. <clears throat> Again, we do not suggest that the taxpayers of Wareham be assessed anything extra. On the contrary, we made it clear that Wareham um, taxpayers are not responsible for this inequity and therefore should not have to pay anything additional. It seems to me that the task at this point is for the interested parties to take a closer look at the various funds connected to the sewers and to identify those funds which can be utilized to correct the situation that developed as a result of, an unfair, of unfair policies, practices, and procedures. We are not anti any area, anti any neighborhood, or anti any other community. We are, and I'll repeat, we are proactive. We are proactive Oakdale. We want to do what's right. We want to do what's reasonable for Oakdale. And that's the basis um, for, my, for my coming before the board. I just want to make it clear that we don't want to do anything that's going to put a burden on any Wareham taxpayers. And we understand that with a little bit of diligence, we can come together and we can find the funds if they're needed, because it might not be any funds needed, but if there are funds, extra funds needed, we can find them without being at the taxpayer's expense. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other citizen participation? If not, Mr. Clark. Um. <laughs> Let's get back through my notes here. Yeah. We have Oh, oh my god. Oh, that's why I was looking for uh, guy can Oh, I'm sorry, next is Westfield. I was skipping back to the notes. It's not here. 
thank you, Sandy Slavin. I'm a member of the Westfield RFP. Uh, we have several issues that are still, we need resolution on so we can finish the RFP. One, the sewer capacity and the status of the pump stations of Toby Road and Springboard. We're waiting for a decision, uh, a comment as to how to put that into the RFP. We also are waiting for the legal decision as to whether or not the BOS can submit an article for the CPA funds of uh, up to 500000 We are also looking for missing minutes from April 21st and um, March 26th of last year. We would love to get this RFP done. April 21st? Yeah, 421 and 326. And the January, four, January 14th minutes, uh, we asked for a um, modification because it was not a meeting of the Westfield RFP. That was, we did yeah, that. We, we did that. We did that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might. Yeah. Yes, did, it hasn't been sent out. You know, this, this, this has been two weeks now since we just did this. Can, can we do two things here? One, he's not, is Mr. Campiner in the hallway? No. Can we have Guy Campina here next week? Emails are fine, uh, but we asked uh, to have him here uh, at that meeting so that he could face us and give us the sewer capacities. I know there have been emails flying around. We didn't ask for emails. We asked Guy to come in uh, for a few minutes. The second thing is, so if we could get that for next week, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, that would be uh, three weeks later than we expected it, but that would be good. Mr. Holmes, I think at your last meeting you did have the sewer. Uh, next week's meeting is... did, the last week, and then... It's for the 27th you have the sewer set up, so when they come in, it's going to be just a sewer meeting, so I heard. I wasn't here that day. No. But they said the 27th is going to be just whatever no. sewer business that we have on the Actually, table, so Mr. Campina can answer all those at that, at that time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, actually, uh, the way that was worded was there was no motion that the last Tuesday of the month was a sewer workshop. That was part of our discussion that night. Mm -hmm. What we did ask for, um, and I might take some of the blame for this because maybe I didn't follow up with an email, but we asked that Mr. Campina be here for two reasons. Uh, two weeks ago, it was to give us this capacity, or maybe it's one week ago, to give us this capacity in person, and two, to be here every week until we had the numbers mm -hmm. Now, the board members were here that night. You remember that? Mm -hmm. um, and this is the second week he's not here, so I'm not sure if we can follow up and get him that message. And number two, not to get off of Westfield, um, if we could send Mr. Bowen or contact Mr. Bowen. Um, this has been out here for a while, um, and we asked for that letter to be submitted um, last week or the week before. It was one week we skipped the agenda altogether. Was it last week? Mm -hmm. So this stuff was supposed to be here last week. So if we could ask Rich to get us that letter um, by next week so that we can get this RFP done, that's all we need. Get the RFP done and get it back out there uh, where it belongs. And, uh, and I only found one meeting that was held downstairs in that room. I didn't see the other meeting. That the April 21st was down here in the cafe Right. The March 26th with a, was a Saturday meeting, which we had over at the conference room on the third floor of the town hall. It was a Saturday meeting to give you a, a to give the board of selectmen a status of what we were doing with the RFP. So I remember this meeting. That was your, that was yours and Mike's first meeting, I think. I don't remember that one. Um, and you. You weren't there. No, the... Kara, myself, Mark, you <coughs> yeah. were there. You came in a few minutes late. And Mike was there on, Mike on was April there, so 21st. We did, the final, we did the final edits on that. On the, uh, yeah. Which meeting was that? That was Which downstairs one? here, April 23rd. I don't think I was here. Are you sure? Yeah, you were here. Yeah. I yes. think I was in Florida. Uh, you were in... 
We yeah. have minutes of the tw of 21st that was approved and, and um, available, and you were listed as one of the selectmen that were in that cafe for the April 21st meeting. Oh. But the March 26th was at th the conference center over there, the conference room at that Town Hall on a Saturday. That was the prior board, though, on the March meeting. It wasn't this board. No. It was the prior board. I don't believe Ellen and Mike were on the board at that time. I wasn't on the board in March. I'm not saying who no, was or was not there, well, but I do put remember it into Mr. Cruz was to there. Find on, out yeah. how to research to, but I believe the March meeting was the old. I don't want to say the old board <laughs> because we were, we're not old, but the previous board. All right, let me let me track those down. What was the date of that second one? The March. March 26th was a Saturday. It was in that conference room. I remember yep. that. Just to give you an update of what we were doing at the RFP at the time. That was in town hall, right? Yes. Okay. Now, Sandy, do you recall who was the secretary at that time? I don't know who was the secretary for the board no. of selectmen. No. Was Mr. Cruz there? No. Yes. You you have the March twenty third. I don't and think. And Kara so. has the April twenty third. No. I've never been to April the meeting. Uh, that was on Saturday. Jane was there. I was there. You were there. Kara was there because I remember Sean and. Um, Savannah playing, and I think Brenda was there too. I think we had a full board. It was like a wrap-up meeting. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll track those down, but the two more important things to get the RFP out the door is to, get, is to have Mr. Campina come and discuss the, the quantities and to have Mr. Bowen send us that opinion yeah. as quickly as possible. And we want that person. I think guys present. In an email so there can be some discussion. Mrs. Begley? Cindy, when was the last time the um, Westfield RFP committee met? Um, when you did it, I do not have my notes with us. I do not have, it was prior, it was, we had a meeting with the board, of, we had, um, we discussed it on January 14th, and I think we met just after that, so it was early February when we discussed the results of the January 14th meeting um, with the Board of Selectmen. I believe it was probably the first week of February, but I would have to go to my notes on it. They gave us a report in February. So and then Mr. Heaney came back with the results of our meeting. So we had the Westfield discussion when Mr. Haney came um, with Mr. Savageau on February 7th. So you've met was since then? No, we have not. So you've not met since February 7th? No, no reason to. Um, and when's the next meeting? We don't have one planned because we had given, we had voted and given Mr. Heaney the permission to take the results of the selectmen's documentation and put it into the RFP without any further meeting of the Westfield RFP group. So Mr. Heaney was waiting for the results so he could finish this without another formal meeting of the RFP group. Right, so the ball field language so was removed. Pieces. Yeah, so I mean it's, yep, and the CPC and the funds. So if you need reference to it, it's page five, um, where it says in the past has capacity, has the water capacity, the sewer capacity to support similar projects is, is adequate, but the town will need to evaluate the current capacity of the sewer in Toby Road and Springborn pumping stations. We would like that to be a very positive statement as opposed to we'll evaluate. So um, this information would go directly to Mr. Haney? Yes. And, and to your knowledge, he's not received any of I this spoke to him about 5.30, 6 o'clock this afternoon, and he had not received it, this information. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, my name is Joe Mulker, and I'm on the uh, Westfield Study Committee. And uh, yes. I'm a little disappointed in uh, the actions we're having here right now. Coming to selectmen's meetings and going to our meetings there, I can remember a couple of meetings ago what the selectman guy was talking to us about uh, Swift Speech having uh, 400,000 gallons going, stormwater going into the sewer system. And I said, to, I said to him after the meeting, I says, 
well, what's happening is I guess they have money appropriated to correct this problem. So therefore, talking to him when I first got on a study committee, I'm a plumber, and uh, I asked them, is there capacity for Westfield to uh, get into the sewer system? And he told me definitely back then, this is over the phone. And talking to him in previous times, I, I, I think something like that, my personal opinion is, I think we can go for it, you know, and, and it's like, to me, it feels like we're dragging our feet. The next thing I have a problem with is, uh, as far as uh, town council getting the definition of uh, going for CPC funds, saying that you people have the right to file for it. I mean, we, we discussed it at our meeting on January 9th, and I thought the consensus of the board was that why, why, why go through this procedure? Because the town, you, the city, you're t we're him, you people are the ones that make the decision. So therefore, in my opinion, I was in the CPC in another, another town here, and the person, the proponents of the, the article that go up and ask for money are the people of the town, not the contractor. And I'm getting the point now that we think that someone thinks that the contractor is going to bid on this thing is going to be the one that's filed for this uh, CPC funds, which uh, that's another thing that's driving me crazy too. And the ball fields are another thing. The ball fields, we had a problem with the definition of how to uh, repair things. And, and the way we have it written up there now, there isn't a contractor out there that's going to come and bid on these things for the ball field. And the other thing was the uh, cutting down on the, the number of, uh, that we're going to stage it. We're going to phase the thing in, into two or three times because it's a big project. And like I say, we have to get off our feet there because the people are waiting to move into this place and it's a win-win situation for the town. And I'm sick and tired of coming up here listening that nothing's being done. Thank you. Thank you. I just, to clarify, <coughs> Mr. Campina did formally send a letter to the RF, to Westfield RFP group saying there was capacity at the pumps at the sewer plant. But it's my understanding, as the sewer commissioners, that must be confirmed by this body. And there was no discussion about the two pump stations of their capacity at that point, but that the, he did say in that letter, and during the last meeting I was at home and I did forward to the board that same letter he had sent to all of us earlier in the year. So when you got it during your meeting, that was me forwarding you what Mr. Campina had forwarded to Board of Selectmen and to the Westfield RFP group. There is there, but we really need it confirmed by the sewer commissioners that it is a fact. Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, if I Mr. might. Holmes. Um, th that's correct, that emails have been sent. Yep. We did not ask for emails because there are conflicting, there are bits of conflicting information. For example, um, he reported that as far as he was concerned, we have sewer capacity for 175 units. I'm reading from, from his, his testimony or, or information. Uh, and if they were going to phase the units, they would have the capacity for the first phase, but would need another letter for the full count. So we as sewer commissioners, I mean, emails are great, but emails don't produce discussion. And as sewer commissioners, we felt, and we, I think, I don't want to speak for anybody else sitting up here, I feel uh, that we asked for a personal appearance by the sewer uh, treatment plant director to give us a face-to-face, -face, up or down on this with some detail so that as sewer commissioners, we could have a discussion and vote on it. And we're not happy that it's been two weeks since that, it took two weeks and now three weeks before that could happen. But we're not going to approve, oh, well, this selectman in sewer commission is not going to approve capacities based on an email with no discussion. So I'm not happy about this. Um, you know, I've been trying to push this up here every week. That's why it's on that agenda. So well, excuse we me. get it done next week, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Holmes, as far as I know, Mr. Campina came up with an agenda for next week. He was under the impression okay. there must be miscommunication between the board at the last meeting right. you had, but he's ready and able to come next week, and everything pertaining next week to, on our agenda will be pertaining to sewer. So okay. the sewer commission should be able to handle everything that we need to do for the sewer commission. 
And I'm we, fine with that. As long as we get the information, we can move forward. Will you also have clarification of who submits the um, CPA grant request and the article? Yep. We will have that information for next week. Okay. okay. We'll send a, a letter to Mr. Ball Mr. Andrews. Tomorrow. Anything else? I think that does. We'll love to get this thing out the door. So we hope next Tuesday have all your questions on the sewer answer. Thank you. If not, I'm back up. <laughs> Thank you. Consent agenda, Mr. Holmes. Okay. Uh, I was just reading through some of this stuff, so thank God I had it there. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Cruz. Uh, first, we had the approval of, uh, I move that we approve the minutes of January 24th as written and transcribed on February 13th by Janet Wilson. Second. Motion made by no. Steve, second by Kara. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three. Zero one. Zero one. Was absent. I was absent. Walter, Ellen, myself. Um, I would make a motion that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting from February 7th as transcribed on February 9th by Janet Wilson. Motion made by Steve, Mrs. Begley. Oh, second. Carol was absent. Sorry, second. Did you say second? Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. Question? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Three, zero, one. Walter, absent. Mike, absent. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the minutes from March 6th as transcribed on March 7th by Janet Wilson. Second. Motion by Steve, second by Kara. Question? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Three, zero, one. Okay, next up we have uh, we have an interview uh, for the um, Marine Resources Commission. Uh, Mr. O'Rourke, are you here? I am. Good evening. Uh, if you would speak right into that. Good evening right to all on of you as well. It, and do your thing and tell us why you have interest in the... Um, Marine Resource Commission. Uh, my name is Teddy O'Rourke. I own and operate Anchor Diving Services that operates out of uh, Mattapoisett, Marion, Wareham, Bourne, Sagamore Beach. I make my living on the water. There's a board opening. And being a small business owner here in town and obviously spending a significant portion of my life with my son on the boat in Wareham Waters, another young voice on a board where there's an opening, I'm all for it. Any questions from you? Yeah, they'll go around the table when the chairman's ready. <laughs> Mrs. Winslow? You a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Born and bred in Brockton. Good. <laughs> the city of champions. Yes, ma'am. And shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Begley? So you're a full-time resident? Correct. Mm -hmm. <coughs> no questions? Thank you for stepping up. Uh, we, we also have uh, Mr. Chairman. There is an explanation and rec recommendation here from the committee. Um, to appoint Mr. O'Rourke as an associate member of the commission. That's what's open. Is that a motion, Mr. Holmes, or are you just reading the... Uh, if everybody's done. Did you, excuse me, do you mind, do, do you want to read the read letter? It? Sure, mm -hmm. I can read it. Um, 
Uh, to the Board of Selectmen from the Chairman of the Marine Resources Commission. Um, at the December 14th meeting of the Marine Resources Commission, it was voted to make the following recommendation. Um, the Marine Resource Commission recommends the Board of Selectmen appoint Len Gay, currently an associate member to the position of member, which the Board has done already. And we recommend that you appoint Teddy O'Rourke to the position of associate on the Commission. Although Mr. Wheeler is the senior associate, he has expressed the desire to remain an associate. Mr. Gay, our junior member, um, has expressed his desire to move up to full member and replace Mr. Schluter. Mr. O'Rourke's application is on file. So I'd make a motion that we appoint uh, Teddy O'Rourke uh, to the position of associate member on the Marine Resources Commission. Uh, to a term to expire no later than June 30th, 2012. Second. Motion made, second by Kara. Question? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Four zero zero. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your evening. Thank you very Thank much. You Congratulations. Too. Be sure to uh, go to the uh, clerk's office. Teddy gets one. I will do that. Tomorrow as time allows before I get him off the bus. Great. Yeah, there you Thanks. go. As long as you do it before you attend the next meeting. Yes, sir. Um, also, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, we had uh, we had Mr. Uh, Bruce Savageau, um had applied for the position on the Tremont Nail Planning Committee uh, last month. Mr. Uh, Savageo was ill. We received an email. Uh, today, I believe it was this morning, asking that at this time he be uh, excused from interview. He is running for selectman. And obviously, if, if he wins that seat, then he wouldn't be able to serve on the Tremont Nail Committee. So at this point, he's asked us to put his application on hold. OK, Mr. Holmes, okay. I think we can continue uh, with number B. I'm sorry? I will continue with license permits, number B. Yes, sir. Uh, next up is the uh, application for change of hours for L.R. Hunt LLC Cafe Soleil. So, Soleil. 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 <laughs> if you wouldn't mind to uh, introduce yourself and explain what the issue is in uh, change of hours, please. Uh, my name's Robert Hunt. Uh, my wife and I, Leanne own Cafe Soleil, 241 Main Street, and we're applying for an application for a change of hours. Uh, we'd like to go to Wednesday through Saturday, 4.30 to 8.30. Mr. Chair? Yes. What are the existing hours? I believe they are uh, Wednesday through Saturday, um, Saturday starting, I think at noon time. Um, she'd like to have her Saturday morning, so we're going to try to go to 4.30. Mr. Chair? Yes. Weren't you open on Sundays too? We were. Right. It was costing us money to be open, um, so we cut it back one day I remember when um, you originally came in for your license and you're both still working full-time yes we are and doing this yes so you're cutting back a little bit so that you can stay in the long haul exactly exactly she needed to take a breath <laughs> I understand because it's two full-time jobs it is so the change would be it's Wednesday currently Wednesday was Wednesday through Sunday Correct. Then, um, so now it's going to be Wednesday through Saturday, 4.30 to 8.30? Correct. Thank you. Any other questions for the board? Now, Mr. Chairman, uh, at this point I'd make a, make a motion to approve the application for a change of hours from L.R. Hunt, LLC, doing business as Cafe Soleil on 241 Main Street, Wareham, under the provisions of Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Law, changing the hours from Wednesday through Saturday, 4.30 p.m. through 8.30 p.m. Second. Motion made by Steve, second by Kara. Question? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 
All opposed? Four zero zero. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Continued luck, I guess, yeah. is the way to say it. Right? Just, Mr. Can I have a question yes. for Mr. Andrews? Will this be reflected on their, I mean, they have a liquor license that reflects Sunday. So do they have to go in for a new? Yes. A new the, one? The board, the board will prepare a new uh, hour uh, reflected from the vote that was just taken. Okay, so they have to go in the office and pick that That's up correct. once we sign it. Okay. Yes. They'll be notified. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Have we got somebody here from uh, Pro Team Quick Oil Change? Yes, sir. Oh, welcome. How are you? Uh, we have an application this evening. Oh. Oh, a late renewal. Yeah. Uh, if you wouldn't mind to state your name uh, for the record, speak right into the mic, and, and tell us. You might as well just go right to the point, right? Yeah. Just tell us why you were late. Uh, my name is Joe Gard, and I own Gard Services, Inc., uh, doing business as Pro Team Quick Oil Change. And I'm here tonight for a late renewal um, on a Class 2 dealer's license. Um, the reason for that is we had some, beyond our control, some economic hardships that uh, – kind of a domino effect that affected us towards the end of the year, which enabled us to be able to get the license. So that has since changed, and we have since um, remedied the situation, and here I am tonight to ask for your forgiveness in this matter. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry, I know sometimes those things, but you got to... Right. You got to answer the question. Right? Yeah, no, 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 okay. no, no worries. I wasn't trying to grill you or anything. Nope. Any questions from the board? Mrs. Winslow? I don't have any questions. I have a question. Sure. Were you, um, during the time that was difficult for you, were you still operating? Uh, we were still operating as a quick lube and as a licensed dealer. The dealership plate renews in March, and then the license with the town ends at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. We haven't done anything since the license and the town has lapsed. We haven't sold anything on our books. So you haven't you haven't been doing oil changes or anything? Oh no no we're doing oil changes. This is for the class two for the used this car. This is for the class two for the This used is for car. used cars. Correct. Sorry, I misread it for no, a second. No, that's okay. There. So you haven't done anything with that? We have not, no. We we have some things that are kind of waiting to be done once the, the application gets approved. So I understand. Any other questions? Mr. Holtz? I make a motion that we uh, Approve the renewal application for God Services Inc. Doing business as Pro Team Quick Oil Change, 3067 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham, under the provisions of Chapter 140 of Mass General Law. Second. Motion made by Steve, second by Kara. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? 4 0 0. Good luck. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Continue good luck. Night. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Mr. Chairman, next up we have a request. Uh, for use of town roads uh, for the Dick Maloney Youth Foundation, care of Richard Maloney, 7 Peter Cooper Drive, to hold the uh, bicycle run on September 16, 2012. Is anybody here for the Maloney Foundation? I don't think so. I think Mr. Chair? Yes. I believe we approved this last week. It's just been amended. Amended? What's the amendment? They're not going to need the use of the parking lots. There's a note in our packet amended. They won't need the use of the parking lot this year. But didn't we do this one last week? I don't recall. Um, I would make a, make a motion to approve the application received from the Dick Maloney Youth Foundation um, for the use of town roads uh, to hold the annual bike run on Sunday, September 16, 2012. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll second, but if the maker of the motion wouldn't mind including the words as amended. Oh, as amended uh, without the park, the onset pier parking lot. Second. Motion made and second. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Four zero zero. Next up we have... Uh, Anyone here to speak on the uh, malt and beverage request for the wine tasting? Huh. 
Uh, this is for the uh, Foundation for Wareham Education, William Ellis. Uh, they're requesting a one-day wine and malt beverage license uh, for the Foundation of Wareham Education on May 18th at the Box Mill Hall, Tyhonet Marketplace in Wareham, requested by William T. Ellis. Mr. Chair. I noticed that there is no email or letter attached to this that advises Mr. Ellis that we'd be reviewing this information this evening, so I would respectfully request that Mr. Ellis be notified of our intent. He does leave an email address on this application uh, and that we get him on one of the upcoming agendas. Question from the board. There are none. Uh, what, what was the motion? Well, she didn't make a motion yet. She was just suggested. Suggested. I, I suggest typically when we have these, there's an email or a letter that goes out and advises the applicant that they are on our agenda and where the meeting and time of the meeting is. There doesn't appear to be that. This is a one day uh, license, and we really should have a conversation with the responsible party before we issue it. But I, it, there's no indication that the individual was, in fact, notified. To make a motion, is the motion to hold or table? Or I'll make a motion to, to hold the application for one day, wines and malts, beverages for the wine tasting for Foundation of Wareham Education, care of William Ellis, to be held on May 18, 2012 at the Box Hill, Box Mill Hall, Tyhonet Marketplace in Wareham, pending notification of Mr. Ellis to appear before the board to discuss the application. I think, why can't we just put it on the next agenda as opposed to making that motion so, until May, is that correct? Right. Well, I, that's what I want. I want it to be on one of the upcoming agendas. Does it have to be a motion? Well, it's a motion just to, to change this uh, instead of doing it tonight. Yeah, I don't think yeah, it needs to be a motion. April. Does it need to be a motion, Mr. Chair? Can it just oh. be put on the next agenda? If we agree, agree on it, then we can I'll withdraw my motion. Mr. Chair, could Mr. Andrews please have the office notify Mr. Ellis that he'll be on next week's agenda? Now, the next week agenda, like we said earlier, is supposed to be totally sewer. So we'll probably have item. to go in. This one item? No, no, he has a list. No, this one item? Right. And it's in May. So we can still do it in April. What, whatever your pleasure is, Mr. Chair, but well, send I a notice and whatever they're available, we'll, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I would like to talk to them. You know, we get our questions answered before we issue a license like this. Town Administrator's report. Mr. Chairman, uh, through you to the listening audience and to the board, um, I'd like to ask Jackie Lindsay and uh, Maria, Maria Oliva to come forward, please. <coughs> Good evening. Good, thank you. Good Mr. Chairman, uh, Jackie Lindsay has been working with Marie uh, with respect to the 100th centennial of the Cape Cod Canal, uh, and we'll provide an update for the board, and, and action is required by the board, and I'll let uh, these, mo these two most esteemed individuals give us an update. If I can just give you an update while Jackie's passing that out is that the Centennial Committee is chaired by um, Rear Admiral Richard Gernon from the Mass Maritime Academy. I'm the Vice Chair. We have a steering committee. We've got seven or eight different subcommittees working on trying to organize this. The committee's been meeting for about, I would say, uh, a year and a half, and we've got a ways to go. Um, we just recently received some um, additional funding from Mass Office of Travel and Tourism, so trying to raise funding as well as um, coordinate uh, an event that includes obviously the um, in town of Wareham, which is represented by um, Wareham uh, Village Association, Onsa Bay Association, many other representatives have come to the meeting. So we're happy to be here tonight. And Jackie, I'll let you talk about the sail trail. Well, we're, we're introducing the sail trail, which is similar to the whale trail, which I have given Ellen a copy um, to pass along for those that aren't familiar with the whale trail. It took place on Cape Cod and the Islands back in 2005. 
uh, brought tremendous amount of um, tourism to each and every one of these areas. We will have maps of all the people that decide to join us for the sale. So the, uh, for example, we have the sale area will be 12 feet by 4 feet. And um, we have very strict guidelines of how we want these um, sales decorated. They really should be done professionally. They'll be for businesses that have the space that can accommodate um, this, and people will come from all over. This is an international event. Um, we will also have maps with all the locations of, so people can follow the trail all the way along. Uh, we will also have a list provided to the building inspector, so for each and every one that is erected, he will come by to make sure that um, it is approved. It will sit in a two-foot two by two-foot cement block. It will also have um, hardware to hold it in place. Uh, we're looking for the proper clearance, and uh, a pipe will hold it, and then they can also be locked. So we're hoping that you give us your blessing. Sandwich has already approved. We also have guidelines for our historic district, so there shouldn't be um, any problem with this. Each of the sales will raise, there'll be $1,300 is what we will sell them for. And we need this money desperately to get this event off of the ground. We have tons of advertising to do, both locally, nationally, and internationally. <coughs> so we're looking for prospective people, but we need your blessing first so we can start to solicit because this will be the seed money coming in. And if I can just mention, Jackie um, spearheads the fundraising committee and has come up with some great ideas and put all this package together. And these sales are going to be throughout um, Bourne Sandwich Wareham, but they might be going into Plymouth. And it denotes uh, a year in advance that the sales um, are going to represent this celebration coming from the Cape Cod Canal. So it was a great idea coming out of the fundraising committee. And Sandwich has approved it through the Board of Selectmen, and Bourne is eminent that they will do that as well. Great. Mr. Chairman, if I could, just real quick. Uh, this really is a, uh, an event uh, for the South Coast, and uh, I want to compliment Jackie and Marie for, Marie for the work. Uh, a lot of the dollars, <coughs> pardon my voice, a lot of the dollars that are needed are needed up front uh, right. Because other other cities across the country, uh, regions have done uh, various types of work <coughs> like this. Cincinnati has, uh, the, the the city of Havel has, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which being a shoe manufacturing uh, city for many many years, uh, it denotes a trail, uh, brings in tourism, um, and what's the most important to the town administrator, something called disposable income. So, um, as people spend right. dollars, it fuels the local economy, and this will have a Give the give the, the the board a little bit of a ramp up. So there's a series of events that will be happening, and then this is a two week process, I think, or is it? No, is this it is a year. A year the, long. These process. will go up um, March of 2013 and stay up until 2014. Okay. The events are actually going to start around. Um, our first event is in June this year. We're going to have ongoing events from now until 2014, and probably around November. And people will be coming before and after and in between because there'll be so many wonderful things taking place. Right, uh, but the I, I think my understanding is that these sales go up about a year before the event begins. So the events are going to be the end of July, beginning of August 2014, so that the the sales go up on or around August or before August um, the pre previous year and stay up um, until the event is over. So it's anticipated they would stay up for about a year. In the year of two th um, 2014, Team. we will also have events going from July through August for nine consecutive days. They will go yeah. from Wareham through Onset down to Bonn, all the way down to Sandwich. And these will be land and sea, uh, lighted boat parades, fireworks, There's tons of stuff that we have planned. And we have great imaginative people on our group. And I'm glad I'm not on the event committee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so have you all had a chance to look at the whale trail that I passed? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, the really attraction good, that so. will bring tourism to each and every one of these towns and all our businesses here. Mr. Holmes? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, through you, um, 
These displays uh, would go up around about August of 2013, and we would be taken down November 2014. And then it says that, um, you know, I guess you've spoken to Miles, Director of Inspectional Services, about this. Yes. Um, and then it says that the display must be maintained in presentable condition and satisfy any applicable safety and concerns and regulations. Who is responsible for that piece? For the safety part of it? No, be our building the, inspector. it says here, display must be maintained in presentable condition and satisfy any applicable safety concern and regulation. That will be the person that that buys it. They, they will. So an individual puts, a up, puts up their sale. Yes. And then they're going to maintain that sale mm -hmm. in yes. proper decorum and make sure that it's not unsightly. Right. To use a, exactly. a word. Mm -hmm. And if they don't do that, what happens? Um, that's a good I'm question. I'm just thinking down well, the road. I mean, well, well we're, we're going to be on top of the whole thing. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it'll have to be pre-approved. Yeah, we, yeah. Every sale know, just, in the design and how it's going to look, and it's going to come back to the steering committee. Right. Fundraising committee is going to be overseeing that. That's not my question. My question okay. is, once they put it up, mm -hmm. and we have weather or we have issues with it, who's res who's responsible? responsibility is it going to be to maintain it until November of 2014? The person. The towns, or is it no, the, the person? The person, the business that purchases it. And if and if they fail to do that, then the, well, the we committee would, will do we it? Well, we would actually go and speak with them. We, we want it to be presentable. Right. We, well, so do we. This is an international crowd coming in here. We, you know, right. we want to that's make a great That's what my question impression. is, because yeah. I, I just, my only concern is that uh, they don't do it. Right, and I'm sure they would, but in the case they don't, and we're not going to be asking Mr. Gifford to do it right. with a short no. uh, staffed maintenance department. As yeah, it we're is not now. looking for this to no. be any burden on the on the town right. services. Right. right, Mr. Bigley. Would there be a written agreement if someone purchased it? Would you have some sort of? There's a contract, a one-page contract. Right. So there's. We'll put that wording in there, Jackie. <laughs> Oh, did I yeah, we're going to add that in there now. Okay. Yeah, that's a good. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. It's my only okay. concern is that we sanction it and then something happens and then we're responsible. No, and they sanction. can also be taken down, Steve, uh, during a storm. Like if if we were having a hurricane, they can easily be unhooked and taken down. The owners so can I, take I them I think in. it's a great idea. Yeah, great. Any other questions, Mrs. Winslow? Uh, the only question I have is. I don't see any s suggested motion in any of these documents, so. Oh, we're, we're going to do that right now, once all the questions. Are okay. Done. But is there a particular motion? Or? You so. basically have a guideline care of what we would submit if the Historical Society asked any questions, if they went up in a historic district, or if they, wherever they went in. But the motion is for you to make, to approve. Just to approve. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's no, all right. That's what I was wondering. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Holmes? No, I make a motion that the Board of Selectmen support the sales, S-A-I-L-S program, um, which allows for the, for the adjustment of the current town guidelines for compliance of these types of dates uh, where we now have a maximum of three-day leeway, we would extend that um, leeway from the period of August 2013 through November 2014. Second. Made by Steve, second by Kara. Any other questions? Kara, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Four zero zero. Thank you very much. Thank Welcome. you very much. Thank Good you. luck to you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, uh, moving on, item number two. Uh, we have received um, responses to the posting for the town accountant's position. Uh, please be advised that I've activated the town accountant screening committee, which would to be comprised of uh, John Foster, uh, treasurer collector, Selectwoman Begley, uh, Anna Miranda, director of operations and finance for the uh, school district, and a member, I believe it will be Sam Gray from the finance committee, uh, Barbara Marcos, who is scheduling uh, the interviews and that process is moving forward. Item number B, Mr. Chairman, just so that uh, this fits in quite, quite nicely with item C, 
um, of Wareham's Brightside. Uh, back in October of 2011, uh, if you can just make that notation on B, Article 15 provided for $163,000 of CPC funding uh, to be used for the roofs and for the exterior uh, painting and preservation of uh, Memorial Town Hall. Uh, that process is moving forward, uh, and we have uh, selected through municipal maintenance a painting company to get that work started uh, very shortly. And I'll keep you posted on the progress of this. On uh, Tuesday, March 13th, uh, we had the Veterans Memorial Plaque dedication at, in the foyer, second floor of Town Hall. Uh, I, I was joined with Chairman Walter Cruz and Selectwoman Begley, Senator Mark Pacheco, uh, Congressman William Keating, State Representative Susan Williams Gifford, uh, Irvin Russell, representing uh, Co Congressman Bonnie Frank, Veterans Affairs Agents Ed Merrigan and James Crockett, uh, and James Newman, who is here tonight. Um, and uh, this was really, uh, I, I thought, marked a, uh, the rehabilitation of the veterans plaques from the Re Revolutionary War to the current uh, present day. Uh, we were joined by families and members of veterans uh, that have served, and in some cases, uh, their family members uh, pay the ultimate sacrifice with their lives. Uh, I'd like to extend an appreciation also to Dunkin' Donuts for providing the refreshments. Uh, we joined uh, and, and had a great time. Jim, do you want to say something? You want to come up and give us a quick, the Reader's Digest version, please. <laughs> the quick version. Thank you. Quickly. Jim. Yeah, that, that project only took five years. <laughs> I've only been here for two, but well put. <laughs> well, we started with menu boards. We, we finally could get, get an okay to buy the letters. We only needed something like 10,000 letters, and they wanted 375 for a letter. And I went to what we have now, which I think is very good. Great. And the maintenance men that you put on the job to, to get the boards ready did a hell of a job with them, I thought. I hate to put them on the spot, but we have the one and only of yeah, the, the three one. amigos, Frank yeah, the one, one, one and only. back. Frank is here, of one of the three amigos. But that's good, because I'm glad that Frank's here, because I got more names for you. All right. <laughs> Come and get them tomorrow. I'll have them for you tomorrow. Right. And we're going to change that World War II. I had a com complaint on that. As you know, any place you go, you see World War II, it's with, with Roman nobles too. Two lines, two ones. And we have, what we have down here is World War, the numeral two, and it's upset a few people. To me, I never even paid any attention to it, but, but that late, I, I thought it was brought to my attention. I'm looking, every place you look, World War Two is with the Roman, Roman numeral two. Okay. We'll, t we'll take care of it. We'll get on it. I have already. I got, I got the on? order in already. Okay. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste any time on these matters, Jim. Get right at it. No, I won't waste. <laughs> at five years, I'm not going to waste any more time. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. And I want to thank Alan and Walter for being there that, the other night. It was a pleasure having you there. I kind of miss you, Steve, and uh, I think you had something to do that you weren't there. It's, it's called a job. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. Oh, I did know it. At 5 o'clock, it's a job. Yeah. Okay. Gotta eat. Gotta eat. And I apologize, Mr. Newman, I had planned to go, but it was uh, an emergency at my daughter's school that afternoon, and we just didn't get back. I feel it was time. a good reason, because you guys are always there. Both of the cha both through you, Mr. Chairman, both the selectmen notify the office, and, and once again, we were represented by I thank the chairman you. and uh, selectwoman Be Begley. Again, thank you. I'd like to thank everybody for help. And if anybody wants to know why, how they get the names on the board, they had to that been a resident of Wareham when they enlisted. I don't care if they enlisted out in California or in Hawaii. As long as they were a resident of Wareham at the time of their enlistment, then they can go on that board. My name is up there, but it's my sense, not mine. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Chairman, item D, uh, we, we it was notified by Chief Stanley uh, on that same day, March 13th that we have received $6,000 for traffic enforcement grant from the Mass Department of Public Safety. Uh, this grant will be used for the May click it or ticket 
uh, in the Drive Sober and or uh, Get Pulled Over programs. These mobilizations are part of a 2012 track, uh, Traffic Enforcement Grant Program. And uh, I, the chief was here earlier. He will be bringing forward to the board uh, a new traffic program, uh, and that will be unveiled very shortly uh, for the board's review and, um, and advice in council. Um, on status of current projects, uh, we, we are working, Mar Mary Ann Silver is working with town council and myself uh, on the final language, hopefully on uh, the board of sewer commissioners. Uh, we are working, uh, once again, together uh, with the school committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just for the edification of the board, I'm meeting with the superintendent tomorrow afternoon uh, to go over some budgetary items. Um, and the action committee met this afternoon at 5 p.m. Uh, with uh, Slackwoman Begley and uh, Mary Jane Driscoll, I see in the audience. Uh, town hall virtualization, I hope to get uh, 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 Mr. Underhill and members of the virtualization team uh, before the board very shortly. You also have uh, in front of you a highlighted in yellow an updated financial management action plan. Uh, all four areas uh, through the accounting office uh, and progress has been made. You all certainly should have received also copies that Mr. Justin Cole has complied with the Schedule A submissions to the Mass Department of Revenue, uh, by the way, ahead of schedule. Um, and if you go on, and they'll update it very shortly, mass.gov and look up Wareham, you see that those submissions are now uh, in a number of different spots, including uh, communities at a glance. Um, also, uh, and it should be on here, we are working with the governor's office on the uh, presentation of the governor's bill relative to the um, special legislation needed for the upcoming election. And I've been working with uh, Ms. Liz Nadzo of the governor's legal counsel, as well as our town council on that. And I'll keep the board posted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Why don't we just continue uh, in blue at the end? Thank you. Okay. Next up is the, the annual town election. Um, I make a motion that we uh, send to the constables of the town of Wareham the following. Greetings. In the name of, co of the Commonwealth, you are hereby required to notify and warn inhabitants of said town who are qualified to vote in the election to vote at precinct one memorial town hall 54 marion road precinct two hammond school 13 highland avenue precinct three minot forest school minot avenue precinct four deca school 760 main street precinct five deca school 760 main street Precinct 6, Elks, 2859 Cranberry Highway, on Tuesday, April the 3rd, 2012, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. to cast their votes in an annual town election for the following. Board of Selectmen, one position, three years. Board of Selectmen, one position, two years. Board of Assessors, two positions, three years. Board of Assessors, one position, one year. School Committee, two positions, three years. Deputy Town Moderator, one position, three years. Housing Authority, one position, five years. Question, Charter Change, Article 38. And to attend the annual town meeting in the Wareham High School, Viking Drive, on Monday, April 23rd, 2012, at 7 p.m. to act accordingly. Hereof, fail not and make return of this warrant with your doings thereon at the time and place of said election and meeting given under our hands on this 20th day of March, 2012. Walter B. Cruz, Chairman, Kara A. Winslow, Stephen M. Holmes, Clerk, Ellen M. Begley, J. Michael Snyder, Board of Selectmen in the town of Wareham. Second. And this is to be posted at the Memorial Town Hall, West Wareham Post Office, Onset Post Office, Wareham Free Library, East Wareham Post Office, 
Lodge of the Elks. Last date of post, the warrant is March 27, 2012. So moved. Second. Second by Kara. Questions? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? 4 zero, zero. Yeah, next up, we have the discussion of the Minot Forest Elementary School Building Committee. Is there anybody here? Mr. Chairman, if I could address this. Right. Thank you. Right. No, right here. Steve. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Th Andrews. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, last week, we met um, with members of the school committee, chairman of the school committee, Superintendent Rabinovich, uh, Chairman Cruz, um, myself and uh, staff members, uh, with a, in a conference call with the Massachusetts School Building uh, Authority, we, and we posed to them a number of questions. Uh, once again, the first and foremost is, uh, uh, are we in line? Are we moving forward with the project? Uh, as you know, uh, the uh, first part of that process re it, uh, revolves around a study. The second part revolves around uh, an architectural and uh, engineering design. And then the last part of the project will, go, will uh, consist of construction. Um, and so we had a very uh, lengthy conference call with Diane Sullivan of the Mass School Building Authority. And uh, she helped guide us through uh, the, the, the process. Uh, one of the more key points that was, was mentioned that, uh, that members brought up at the previous meeting, uh, there is no uh, prohibition on any member of the Board of Selectmen serving on that uh, August committee. Uh, it's going to be uh, a lengthy process. There's a lot of work to be done, and certainly any member of the board, uh, Mr. Chairman, if if uh, nominated and appointed, could serve on the committee. Um, and I, uh, I hope I filled in all the blanks. Did I miss anything? Uh, you know, I think you got it down right. So we're, what we're looking for now tonight is a volunteer to sit on the committee. Uh, it's going to be ongoing, and once you're on it, you're going to be on until the duration of the project what day and times are the meeting scheduled we don't know. For? so someone's got to be available to go because they, it all depends on the committee and the hours and the time that they do it so any, any other uh, I make a motion to appoint Mrs. Begley uh, to the committee motion made Second. Second by Kara. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Four zero zero. Mrs. Begley? And then, if, and then if there's an issue, uh, Mrs. Begley can just let us know. One of us can fill in if she's, if she's on. Is that okay? You don't need a specific alternative, do you? Just any one of us. Yeah. yeah. So, Mr. Andrews, if you just let uh, <laughs> the committee inform them of who is. Uh, Representative. Mr. Chairman, I'll get a note off in the morning to uh, the committee members. Thank you. Okay, next up is the uh, discussion of this 1958 uh, liquor policy regarding hours of operation. Okay, this was put, put on because I think a select, select person, Mrs. Begley, had recommended a show cause. Mm -hmm. So we just want to discuss it before we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, unless you want to elaborate on why you had a show cause. Certainly. Sure. Um, I was glad, uh, Mr. Sure. Chair, that you uh, included this policy because this does state that each applicant shall provide the licensing authority with the actual hours they shall be open. In advance, but not um, including but not limited to vacations, et cetera, et cetera. And if approved by the licensing authority, the recipient of the license shall display it. Any proposed changes to these hours once approved by the licensing authority cannot be changed or posted without the express approval of licensing authority. Um, and any violations of this policy may warrant the licensing authority to enforce the violation proceedings section of the Board of Selectmen Al Alcoholic Beverage Control Policy 88-14, which was previously forwarded to each alcoholic beverage licensee. So um, yes, um, I think that I would like a show cause hearing. We received um, a report from the Chief of Police 
dated February 15th, that two establishments in the town of Wareham were open on a day that they did not, they were not licensed to serve alcohol. They were licensed to serve alcohol Wednesday through Sunday, and both establishments were open and pouring on a Tuesday. So I'd like the chief to come in with his report, and I would like these, um, the owners of these establishments or man and or managers to come for a show cause hearing before this board. Any question for any member of the board? Mrs. Mrs. Winslow? Um, I saw the chief here earlier, but I, I'm not sure if he's still here. Uh, but did the chief go into these establishments and advise them that they were not supposed to be open on that day? This was Valentine's Day, correct? Mr. Chair? Yes. Yes. And it's on their license. And the, um, the establishments, we don't choose the hours that they're open. The establishments, co they come before this board. They say, we want to be open just Saturday and Sunday from they could, you know, 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. We can discourage them from having those limited hours and say, you know, why don't you be open more days or whatever? Or, as we had a, a license that we approved this, ev this evening, seven days a week. That's, that's <laughs> quite a project, in my personal opinion, to be open from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m., seven days a week. So it's not that this particular licensing authority restricts their hours. The holders of the license, licenses choose the hours. They come before this board. So I take issue that they were open. They, all, they had, all they had to do was come before this board, and I'm not going to conduct the hearing here. So I would, I'm respectfully asking for a show cause hearing. Well, I guess, Mr. Chair, I'm just trying to understand these were two previously seasonal license holders who wouldn't have had the ability to have been open in February. And they just got their year-round licenses under the jobs bill that Mr. Andrews uh, got for us back in 2010. And before I call a business before us like this, I, I want to be sure that the police chief went there, told them that they were in violation. Did the business refuse to shut down? I mean, these are questions that we have to consider. Mr. Cruz, that's what a show cause hearing is, Mrs. Winslow. It's not, that's, that's what a show cause hearing is. It's not punitive. It's to show cause. It's not a punitive, necessarily a punitive process. It's to give the, the business own, owner an opportunity to come here, and it's also a public hearing so that abutters or neighbors can also have communication with this board. That's, that's what we do. We're the gatekeepers for the licenses. That's what, a sh what you're asking. All that information is what a show cause hearing is, is that the police chief comes here, the business owners come here, we're here, and we all have a conversation. Okay, now that information was emailed, I think, to all of us because I had read the email with the stipulation that was in there or the violation. The police did go to each one of these. And to show cause, what I'm saying is most of the time in anything in life, you always get a warning. So to have them come before the board and uh, before us at this time, I don't think. I think all we have to do is write them a warning. Uh, ABC and all the rest of them when you have a liquor violation the first uh, violation is usually a, a warning anyway so uh, mr. chair I'm on, sorry a show, on a show causing hearing I don't think it's that viable if it happened again then we'll have the record that we did give them a warning and we'll be there second time mr. chair we can't give them a warning at this time we have that's what a show cause hearing is miss the chief comes in with his report the businesses owners are here they also have the opportunity to have input into the whole process. Right now, we're violating their rights in not giving them an opportunity to have their say. So a show cause hearing is to have all the, the members and all the public, the business owner, everybody in the same room. Right now, we're conducting a show cause hearing without them in the room. 
Okay, it's, so this is not leg a legal process, okay, Mr. So Chair. Okay, so you're asking if we want to show cause for the two businesses. I'm saying that we don't need one. We can bring it up to the attorney and, and let him uh, ha let him decide. Because they already had they already have uh, a notification from the chief of police. Okay. Um, I, I, this thing here is talking about the policy. The the agenda item is the policy. Yes. Um, and so that's what I thought we were talking about. Um, you know, this policy is back from 19, <coughs> is it 1988? Oh, it is 1988. You know, and, I, and I've had questions about this policy myself for, for almost two years. And my issue is with the policy is that one, I think last week it was mentioned that we should review these and I would plan to do that over the next 12 months. But, um, you know, you see these emails um, flying through. We're going to be open this hour. We're going to be open that hour. We're having a tournament. We're opening this hour. We're having a special party. We're going to close at this hour. Um, and every one of those are violations of this policy, by the way. And we didn't have any show cause hearings for any of those people. Um, and so because there needs to be a response from the licensing authority. And when they send us these emails, uh, it would be a violation for the five of us to answer on that email because we'd be violating That's right. the open meeting law. That's right. Um, so, one, um, I had seen some stuff from Mr. Bowen not long ago, and I, maybe we can run it by him. He actually wrote some of these policies for another town. Um, but this policy definitely needs to be updated so that somewhere in here it says – if you want to change your hours, all this says is notify and get approval. People notify. We never give approval for anyone to be open or closed on those special hours. So this thing needs to be updated. As far as, uh, as punitive, Mr. Chairman, by this policy, uh, we can have the owners come and explain what the situation was. Mm -hmm. This licensing board has the authority to say, hey, okay, guys, thank you very much. We want to know what's going on. We're a seaside community. It was Valentine's Day. You should have done this. And maybe they didn't know. Maybe there is no penalty from this that's right. board. So to jump right to we're going to give you a warning, I, I don't think that's the issue. I think we just need to know what happened and get this policy straight. And I agree with Mr. Bowen that you know we should have a workshop once we get into the year 2012 with these policies and have a workshop with our business owners and explain what these policies mm -hmm. are. I mean, I don't think either one of those people were in business in 1988, and I don't think they've ever seen this policy. So I, I'm not – I don't think, Mr. Cruz, and I can't speak, obviously, we haven't listened or voted – but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to give them a warning at all. Mm -hmm. I think it's it just a matter mean, of getting the facts out. It was suggested that Mr. Bowen take a look at it, and he give, comes back to us. I've never seen a public, what would you call it again? A show cause, I've never seen one. So I, I'm not sure if we have to have lawyers, if they have to have lawyers. No, if it's a and we have, there's been several show cause hearings before this Board of Selectmen. Not this, this oh. current board, but there have been several show cause hearings. Because I know we had some people in not too it long ago. It gives everybody, because everyone's notified with adequate notice, it gives everybody an opportunity to have their say. Personally, I feel that much of this discussion has been an illegal show cause hearing without all the parties here. I talked talk to the policy. Mm -hmm. So we'll present it to Mr. Bowen and he'll get back with us. Mr. Andrews? The Tetro. Yeah. Good evening. How are you? I'm well, thank you. If you could speak directly into that mic. Of course. Uh, and tell us what your uh, request is. Uh, I'm requesting that we uh, allow the scrap sale of four old school buses.
questions, Mrs. Begley? Um, yeah, I have a couple. Okay. Is this um, is this because this board declares surplus? So we authorize we declare the surplus that authorized the sale. Correct. Is this the first sale of any surplus? Um, this that, is or is this just the sale of surplus over a certain dollar amount? Uh, it is my understanding I had to come in front of you for the sale of any surplus. Uh, uh, excuse me, please, folks. Go ahead, Mr. Tatro. I'm here just to no. Because you could answer Mrs. Begley's yeah, question. There was some chatter back there that we needed to. Resolve. So this is the first surplus since you've been director. This is the first time we've tried to sell surplus. We used some to trade before. Oh. Um, is that who determines the value of that? Do you know what the value of that was for trade? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't recall. Because, uh, Mr. Andrews. Does this board declare surplus on anything that's valued over a certain amount? Anything, any any surplus item should come before the board of selectmen. So over a certain amount? Is uh, it like over five hundred dollars? I can't really remember. Well, the the quotations that Mr. Tetro had, I believe, the, was it sixteen hundred dollars? No, for four seventy-five no, 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 a piece. No, 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 no. You misunderstand. No. I'm sorry. Who are you, Mr. Tetro? Mr. Tetro said that um, he traded some surplus, but. That's still surplus that had to be declared surplu surplus by this board. Is that correct? That's correct. Can we get a list of that, Mr. Tetra? No, sure. I believe it was declared surplus well before I got to office. But That's I okay. Can I, take I'm care not of sure it. what the Board of Selectmen did. So this is um, who made the assessments for the what, what the value uh, was? These were the verbal estimates. And I also got a stamped certified estimate that these are only worth scrap value. We didn't re did we receive that? It's all on those pictures that you just flipped through, right on the bottom. Oh, Other than the scrap, this vehicle has no monumental value. And, and if I could, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. through you, Mr. Tetro, uh, do, do you not also have uh, independent appraisal? Uh, I think we, is that, is that what, we, what you have in front of you? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. These vehicles have become, uh, as you said earlier, unsightly. Mm -hmm. uh, there appears to be human activity in one of the vehicles because of all of the parts that, that we have salvaged from them. Um, they've become a real safety hazard mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. This is just to remove basically the metal off of the property sure. and get as much money into the general fund as we can. So this money would go into the general fund, not in the revolver? With the price of scrap metal right now, if you have any more, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Andrews, what do we need to do on this? Mr. Chairman, a motion would be ought in order to uh, accept the surplus of these vehicles as presented by Mr. Tetro uh, with respect to uh, the disposal of uh, said items, said assets on behalf of the town. <coughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman, are we still in Mr. the question Holmes. phase? Um, so this money, uh, this 16, 16 or $1,900, these this are for four school buses, correct? Uh, they're, they're for the salvage value of what's left of the school buses. Of what's left of them. And, and that's that's the best price, four hundred dollars each. If I took the time and I drove it to a salvage yard, you know, and I used town resources, equipment, employees, I removed the tires, I removed the glass, we could possibly get more money for them. All right, so this is just a matter. I was just going to say that you know I know I had an expedition and it was like. Six or seven hundred bucks. Yeah, you know, taking a school bus is a lot more weight than an. You'd be surprised what the back. It's not much in the back, but um, but we'd have to do a lot of prep work as well as the transportation. So this includes the uh, removal of. Uh, and of this them. money goes into the tank, just to be sure. Mrs. I would, Begley's I would, answer to the I would, Mr. I would give Mr. Andrews the money himself. Well, to the town. Well, the town, but I would hand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would hand I would hand it to him so it would be accounted for, yeah. and I'd get a receipt as well. It's an untimely. You, you, you might want to talk about that on item G later on. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it would go back in, right. through you, Mr. Chairman, to the general fund where the. Uh, 
process would be completed and um, once again these quotations and also those that's a certified stamped appraisal is that correct mr i gave you the originals okay thank you i don't have them with me but i just wanted the board to understand well, I, I shouldn't say that i gave miss wilson the original okay. copies well, i'd make a motion that uh, we declare school bus b are these still the accurate numbers on these buses yes I'd, I'd make a motion that we declare school bus b9 b28 b1 and b40 scrap second motion made by steve second by kara any other questions hearing none all in favor aye aye, all aye. opposed if you had one more you could have had a chance at me Four zero zero. Thank you, committee. I'd like to make an additional mo a motion that um, we get a list of um, all sur any surplus that has been declared by um, the transportation department um, since for the last four years. Second. Motion made in second. Any other question on that motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Four zero zero. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, beta sign folks. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Thanks, Mr. Tatro. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we received a message that uh, there was an emergency and that the um, beta sign inventory program needs to be postponed. Next up, we have a uh, discussion of fine illegal construction on a public way. Mr. Burke, I believe you're here for that. If you'd Miles, remember to speak directly into that mic. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, this is an authorization to request a fine for a Mr. Kevin Welsh, owner of 60 Robinwood Way in Wareham, Mass. Mr. Welsh has erected a couple of stone pillars at the entryway of the street which is still Robin Wood Way. It is not on his property. I had been in communication with Mr. Welsh several times, and he assured me um, that he was going to either take them down or come before this board, which under Division 4, Article 2, Section 1 of the Wareham uh, uh, Town Bylaws, that it is um, permissible for any type of construction within the street layout of Wareham must be granted by the Board of Selectmen. Um, he has failed to do that on numerous occasions um, so that I feel um, we are not going to get voluntary compliance from Mr. Welsh. He claims that he was just replacing some fencing that was there as ornamental entryway to that street. Um, and was told by the realtor that was part of his property. We've realized that it wasn't and that it looks like an attempt to make that part of his property line. Um, the stonework, even though it was very well constructed, seems to match the uh, stonework on one of his retaining walls and the neighborhood wants it down. I know that he spoke with several members of the association and they weren't in favor of keeping it up. I have had Many letters from uh, Ms. Oliveira. Um, I know um, she must be frustrated, and I apologize for the length of time this took, but we have gotten a lot more success with some voluntary compliance. We're working on a fine book so that we don't have to come in front of you for each and every um, issue where we feel we're not getting the right kind of response from the homeowner. Um, they're not obstructing the public way, but there certainly looks like um, they were built on a public way, and I'm requesting a fine under 1432 of lack of um, prosecution of the violation that the board can authorize up to a $300 fine, which each day constituting a separate offense, I was thinking more along the lines of $100. I would, after this meeting, and a vote by the board if it's deemed necessary, send the proper documentation to Mr. Welsh, telling him that the clock is ticking with uh, maybe two weeks to have the pillars completely removed to my satisfaction and the board satisfaction or a hundred dollars a day with each day constituting a separate offense that's pretty much it Any question, Mr. Uh, just a couple questions did we did get 
a letter from Mr. Welch, correct? I thought I saw a letter. I have, I have had several correspondence from a Mr. Recent. Welch telling me he's going to come before the board and at least request the board's permission to erect those pillars. Um, it, they were done at quite an expense. He did stop short of adding the lighting and the lanterns <laughs> that were initially part of the project, but um, because they were to some expense, uh, I thought it was prudent to at least wait before he came before the board. If the board saw fit to grant the request, he wouldn't have to, to do anything but continue finishing them. But where he refused to come before this board, he's had several conversations with me where he says he's on the way to file something and uh, has yet to show up. So I think um, he's come into the office in person saying that's what he's going to do. And um, w we seem to be in an impasse with giving him uh, approximately 10 months, I believe, to, to do something. Yeah, so uh, it's... Well, I know, I, and I understand this has been an ongoing issue, but I want to make sure that I have all my facts straight before we start finding somebody. Sure. Because if we don't... Would you like a copy of the cease and desist? I have all that, you, you, yeah. Everyone has that? I don't know if everyone has that. There wasn't a copy of his last yeah. correspondence. So this area that the uh, pillar is erected on yes. is a public way. It's not part of a private road that hasn't been accepted by the town. Right. It's a public way. I check with um, the municipal maintenance director okay. as well as other Just town Just simple yes officials. is good. Thank you. And was Mr. Welch notified that this meeting was going to be on tonight's agenda? Yes. Thank you. Any other? Mr. Vega? Mr. Vega? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this has been an ongoing issue, I mean, for some time now. As yes. I recall, I've been getting some correspondence and emails about this for <laughs> some time. Yeah, the, the pillars themselves aren't really in any, you know, they're not preventing plowing or preventing anybody from walking down the beach. It, there is no fence associated with these pillars. They're essentially where two pieces of ornamental fencing um, indicated the entryway to the end of the street where people are allowed to access the beach. It is a public access point. His replacing them with these stone pillars that are an uh, exact replica of the stone that was used on his retaining wall does give the appearance that this is, in some people's view, an attempt to make it look like it's part of his private estate property. and private property. So it's a public way, and yes. um, I understand what you're saying, that we've, we've seen it's almost like similar. a gated community, only this is part of the street. And this is town-owned property? Yes. They're on, the, they're on like, uh, essentially the shoulder of the road. Is, of are the there road, any so. properties that this affects near no. him or just his no, property? No, just his property. Thanks. Mr. Holmes? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through your miles, you said that he was notified of tonight's meeting? Yes. Who notified him? Did I, the Board of Selectmen's office send him a request to appear here? I told them I was putting it on. Uh, he's refused I to. Mean in the past. The reason I asked you yes. the question is because in the past when we've had these issues, the person was sitting here, right? Yes. The trucks and the sand, and then we did the land thing, and the person was sitting right there. Not, you're not the person. Um, and we had an opportunity to, to hear from the person. Before we started finding, I I don't know I don't know as if the um, uh, office notified him, but I I looked to put it on last week and um, they said they moved it to this week, so I I tend to think they might have sent a notice as well. But last week the, all the agenda got blown up anyway. So. Okay, <laughs> so Mr. Chair, this isn't a public yes. hearing. This is no. Yes. No, I'm just saying that in the past when Mr. Burke has requested fines, the person we were about to fine was sitting here and they had an opportunity to speak. Right. He's also had ample opportunity in correspondence between us, both verbal, in person, in writing, um, to come before this board as we explain the procedure to them uh, multiple times. And he, the last 
letter I got from him had a note saying, sorry, I forgot to follow through. I'm going to be doing that. I think that was two months ago, uh, Steve. So, okay. Mr. Chair? Wait, I think Mr. Andrews had no okay, question. I just have a question. Well, let's but go ahead. M Mr. Chairman, thank you. Just, just real quick. Miles, j just when you look at this and the amount of time, and I think uh, uh, Ms. Olivia deserves really a cut in the paper from somebody <laughs> because of the letters that she's written time and time over and over again. Um, we really try to get, what's the term that you use? Is it called voluntary compliance? Yes, and the, that, and the location is, is really kind of remote from what a normal travel day would consist of throughout the town. It's, it's the very end of the road, and I um, sure. haven't heard much from Mr. Welsh one way or the other. And um, to her credit, she's been persistent that we do something, and we have sent him further noticing. Um, like I said, because he spent so much on the construction, I thought if this board saw fit to leave them up, I would um, be able to um, put something in writing back to Mrs. Uh, Oliveira that it's been allowed. But it is a construction on a public way. It's clearly a violation. He hasn't complied. And uh, I think the only alternative under 1432 would be to level some degree of fine per day that the order is not complied with. Th I suggested $100. But it can be up to three hundred for a non criminal complaint. That Mrs. would be Wins at the discretion of the board. Yeah. Mrs. Winslow. My my question is more procedural, um, because Mr. Holmes brought up a good point, and that is that our office didn't actually send a notification. Uh. There's no notification in my paperwork. If we were to issue fines this evening, what type of appeal or what type of, um, I'm trying to think of the word that I'm looking for, but you, you know what I mean. If we were to issue fines this tonight, can he go back and say that he, wa he wasn't properly notified and things of that, is it gonna blow up into a bigger situation at that point? Do we? Are we required to give him any official notice? Well, he, he will be getting official notice. It said one week after receipt of the notice by certified mail. Right, I understand so that. So he has a week to But reply. can he, can he, my question is, can he come back and say, I didn't get to sit up here because I wasn't aware that this happened? Well, well he has one week. So if he has one week, he can uh, do whatever he needs to do to have a I think the only defense he would have is if this board saw fit that those pillars be allowed to remain stationary on a public way. Other than that, he's been properly served cease and desist, which he stopped building them, but they essentially were constructed. They don't need a permit to do a four-foot pillar, um, so we were notified kind of after they went up. So we've kind of been for a while. so he did stop, and we're ch kind of chasing this. It can be any monetary amount that the board sees fit. Mr. Holmes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, one, uh, just to clarify, my question about notification uh, was just th that. It was a question. I believe in the past, the notification for those folks with the trucks and the sanders and right came through our inspectional services department, not the Board of Selectmen. Yes, correct. Um, and once Mr. Burke got those items on our agenda, he then notified the citizen that they needed to come if they wanted to have a say in the matter. Um, that being said, I'm going to, uh, I've told Miles this before and, and, I'll, and I'll stick to this. I um, mean, I've seen a bunch of emails and we're here every week just about anyone can come and talk to us about it. I'm going to make a motion that we support Mr. Burke and that um, he f send Mr. Welch a letter um, to rectify the situation, and if not rectified within a week, or if there's a construction issue where he needs to bring heavy equipment, Miles, yes. you have the leeway to give him that week to two weeks to get it done. And then Mr. Burke begin fining um, Mr. Waltz $100 per day. Motion made by Steve. Second. Second by Kara. Any other questions? 
Hearing none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Four zero zero. Thank you, Miles. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you boy. Thank you very much. on the agenda. It was put on there and Mrs. Begley wanted on it. Yeah. And Mr. Andrews, do you have any comment? Or? Mr. Chairman, um, it, it comes with a heavy heart, uh, obviously. And after close consultation with my family um, and, and given the amount of investment people have made in this town and me and the programs we've tried to put forward um, I just harken back quickly to a number of the safe summer programs where we had uh, a loss of life Scotty Montero uh, really forging ahead with a new police chief new police programs safe summer programs, new lifeguards. I'm fighting like a devil to keep them in uh, because I believe that we are a destination and we have uh, a story to put out there. That story needs to be told every day of every week or every year. Um, I, I would like to thank the board uh, for their support, their advice and their counsel. I'd like to thank everybody in this room. We've worked together in some form. And there comes a time that chapters of your life change. And a chapter of my life has changed. And I will be accepting, even though there's a number of media reports out there, uh, the position in, in Wenham. Um, I want to thank the board for their support. And once again, all of the issues that we've worked upon. Uh, I'm working on a transition plan that now uh, will get us to uh, April, I think it's April 16th, um, and I believe the um, town deserves to have uh, an open process. I, I also have made recommendations to this board as to who should fill in for the time being. Uh, we're up against some very difficult and challenging fiscal issues. We have, in the past, tough choices are ahead of us, and I think that uh, that being said, Mr. Chairman, with respect to my family, I would ask that uh, the uh, um, that the board move forward with its business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, we did have a meeting Saturday, and on his contract, we did waiver the 90-day notification, so he can uh, be released. I think it was the 13th of April. And he'll still be on call for the next 30 days after that for the transition period. Uh, other than that, if anybody else has a Mr. Chair, on. I believe Attorney Bowen said that we had to publicly vote on waiving Section 7B of Mr. Andrews' contract. So with that, I'll make the motion uh, that this board uh, waive the provisions in Section 7B of Mr. Andrews' contract and allow him to leave his employ on Friday, April 13th at 5 p.m. And he will be on call for 30 days after. Well, that's technically part of the transition okay. plan that we're going to work on. That doesn't, I asked Attorney Bowen about that. That's separate from. Motion made, waive the contract. Second by Mr. Holmes. Questions? I have I have a comment. Mrs. Begley. 
I um, certainly spoke to a number of citizens over this past weekend when the, the news got out. Uh, after a while, my mailbox was full. I stopped answering my phone, and people started coming to my home. There are a great number of people in this town that do support Mr. Andrews and his hard work. There are also a few in this town that decided to make his life as miserable as humanly possible. And to those people, I'd like to say, how do you support our town by att attacking our town administrator? Anyone that steps into the breach, we are coming up to an election. We are coming up to town meeting. We are in fiscal crisis mode, as are many of the towns pick up a newspaper. I appeal to those people not to attack anyone that comes in, and I don't understand. I, don't, I can see disagreeing with someone, I can see vehemently disagreeing with someone, but with the attempts of destroying another person's life, I find it unconscionable. So I wish you well, Mr. Andrews, and I, I certainly spoke with you many, many times asking you if there was any way that we could encourage you to stay in our community because there are an awful lot of people here that support you. And you and your family made the decision that was best for you and best for them. And again, I wish you well. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Four zero zero. Uh, Mr. Up, can I make, did you have something? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to point out that we do need uh, a transition plan, and this board needs to um, appoint an acting town administrator so that Mr. Andrews can have some knowledge of who he's going to be transitioning to and that work can begin as soon as possible. Mr. Chair, could I make a recommendation for that? Yes. Um, I recommend, and I don't know if we need a motion, that this board contact the Mass Municipal Association. Um, they certainly can assist us and have assisted many towns in the past on um, finding someone or, or they can make recommendations for an interim town administrator and given the fis fiscal nature um, that we are able to uh, keep Mr. Sullivan full-time as the financial person. Well, I think we have, we have until the 13th uh, mm -hmm. to make a decision right off the top of your head right now. Maybe some people can do it, but I think we need to take a look at all options. Well, Mr. Chair, I'm just saying that if we reach out to the Mass Municipal Association, they may be of assistance to the town, and um, we, I would hope that we would have someone as soon as possible, given that time is short, and it would be helpful if Mr. Andrews was working with that person on a much more consistent basis rather than a couple days a week for 30 days. Right, I think we will have someone, but right now to make that decision tonight, I think it's uh, frugal, but you know, Mass Municipal, that's a great, great idea. Uh, but we can search it. Let's talk it over with the board and have a date if we want to. But uh, keep your eyes and ears open and see what we got coming up. What I'd like to do is Mr. Andrews has served to the best of his ability. And I think he's done a wonderful job. I think we need to take a vote. If someone will make a motion, a vote of confidence on Mark Andrews. It'll be like giving him a resume so at least he knows that he had our support or I move that this board um, demonstrate a vote of confidence in the town administrator, Mr. Mark Andrews. Motion made for a vote of confidence for Mr. Andrews. Second. Second by Steve. I'm not even going to ask any questions. I'm just going to take the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Four zero zero. You're welcome. Well deserved. Mr. Holmes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, under town business, um, I would just like to say that and remind boards and committees uh, that we recently passed a policy here on the board and updated town council and the use of council uh, by boards and committees. Um, 
And and you're gonna. Ha I'm gonna tell you right now. If you're gonna have issues, um, when you fail to follow that policy, and you present bills uh, to town administration. Um, so there are some bills here. I just shared one with Mr. Andrews that I received in an email. He's aware of it, um, where people went out, used a lawyer. Now the bill is here, um, and, and the question is whether or not they even had approval of the board of chairman of the board of selectmen or the town administrator, as stated in the recent policy of 2012. This isn't mm -hmm. a 1988 mm -hmm. policy. It's one that we just finished and made aware, made every board chairman aware, made every committee aware, and yet here we sit, and I think the bill is, what is it, Mark, 10 plus? It's over ten thousand. It's over ten thousand um, dollars, and right now, um, with the fiscal issues we have, that's not a small sum of money. Um, so, um, be very cautious. Uh, the bill has not been paid. So, um, and I think Mr. Andrews would agree that he's going to struggle to find an extra ten thousand dollars somewhere uh, to pay that bill. If he'd like to comment, I welcome his comment on that. But Mr. we Andrew. really need to be forceful with these committees. Um, and I don't believe that's one appointed by the Board of Selectmen, is it? You are correct. Mr. Chairman, uh, for just briefly, because I know the hour is late. We have tried very hard, uh, I think it was mentioned uh, by a, at citizens participation by a person who was trying to point out a certain policy. Uh, we researched that policy. We reminded not only every board and commission uh, whether appointed by the Board of Selectmen or not, mm -hmm. I reminded the leadership team staff, the department heads who are the professional paid individuals that I have either appointed or have put in place, I'm going to hold the department head responsible for this mm -hmm. because this is a matter where an individual sat, a paid professional, in a meeting and people were going to pick up the phone, dial up legal counsel the next day, and that body in, in and of itself really ought to examine their own conscience, uh, to your point, uh, Steve, because we can't have these bills running outside of the legal budget. Uh, I, I will have to find some other way to look to bring this back to the board to pay for this, and it's just not an accepted procedure that this can happen under the circumstances that we face, particularly with the budget. Thank you, Mr. And, Chairman. And to follow up on that, uh, you know, by the policy, if, if, uh, <coughs> If we find that there was, um, the policy was followed that we just wrote, and the chairman of the board of selectmen or Mr. Andrews went through the proper channels, then we need to pay the bill, right? Mm -hmm. Because we followed the policy. Now, I, I don't know if that didn't happen, but on the surface, I'm uh, being told it didn't happen. So I'm not accusing anybody before you start calling my house. Uh, I'm not accusing the board of commission. But it's a serious issue. Um, you know, we just reappointed town council again at, at, a, at a, a flat fee, um, and probably this issue could have been dealt with under that flat <coughs> fee, but, you know, everybody's a specialty, right? And we don't have these kind of dollars to be thrown around. This is one bill, um, and I'm sure there are many more out there. Um, and then people call the Board of Selectmen and complain, oh, my lawyer's not getting paid, my council's not getting paid. We didn't approve it, apparently, and neither did Mr. Andrews. So, and then you come to the six of us and say, pay this $10,000 bill. Um, now, this, this has to stop because we just don't have the money budgeted for this stuff. That's my comment. It's under any town, other town business because that is town business. I have a question. Are there um, certain boards and committees that by statute have um, legal counsel other than town counsel? I know. Well, in my opinion, I can try to answer that. Town council represents the board of selectmen, um, but but when we hired this town council last year, and he renewed, he said his contract would remain the same. They offered um, um, a flat fee for all of these different services. I think there's one service that's not in there. It's labor, right? Labor is some labor is included. Some, I don't have the contract in front of me. Um, and at that time, it was agreed to pay that amount, 
because we were going to knock off all these individual uh, councils that were being paid by using the services of town council. But and we've struggled with that a little bit. Yes, I understand. And I think that the number is very, very small of the boards and committees that by statute have council other than town council. Is that correct, Mr. Andrews? That, that, that is correct because, uh, because of the nature of some of the ways that those councils were engaged over a period of time. And the board is aware of that, particularly as we, as we made the selection last year. But I, th I think what uh, Selectman Holmes is getting at, um, we've sent emails, we've sent directives, we've sent letters, we've asked the department heads to watch, uh, once again, at the meetings that they attend, uh, the use of counsel. And uh, in many cases, including the town clerk, calls me up and says, Mark, we have an issue with, and what do you think? And I'll consult with the chair, uh, and, then, and, and then try to get the most appropriate answer for her. Uh, and then I think, and this I think was said at some point, uh, when I first came on, I was dispatched to Boston, and there was a book this thick of legal matters that were pending before the town. And my head was spinning when I walked out of those law offices after about seven hours. Now it's about two pages or three pages two-sided. Two I'm worried about a couple matters that I, out there, as the board knows. But you know, we've made great strides with, you know, free, free Law Day Friday. Come by on Friday or Thursday. Talk with no. Rich. So, not free. Well, it's not free, but it's, not free. it's flat. <laughs> <laughs> You're not on the clock. Not free, right, Walter? <laughs> Mr. Cruz, one last question. Um, can you let this just give for a point of information for the other members of this board? Could you just let us know which boards and committees, you know, the, um, by statute, can retain counsel? And you. could you let us know how much that is? Yeah, you know, I won't bet my life on it, but I don't think any of them, by statute, have it. It's just a practice that they've been doing it. I'm thinking so land long. use. Right. No. But but we'll do. CBA we'll, uh, has their own council. Yeah, because they've been doing it by. Uh, by so. So we we'll check on it. Would you do that? Okay. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. And and if they do by law, then we have this new firm on board. We need to work together as a. As I mentioned before, as a team and as a group, so if they can do, and the new attorney, the attorney that we have now, they're proficient in land use, so there should be no no problem. And like I'm saying, as I said, and if that issue it falls under that, then so be it. Uh, but I'm being told at this point that that's not the case mm -hmm. by the town administrator. I understand, Mrs. Winslow. Mr. Chair, um, I have uh, two quick items under any other town business. I had asked a couple weeks ago for the issue that the land trust brought to our attention about the hunting stands near the walking trails in, I believe it was Minot Forest? Fairing, Fairing, Fairing Hill, sorry, Fairing. Um, it, that hasn't appeared on an agenda yet, but there's, there's two issues. The first is that, um, that's town-owned land, so there should not be any structures built, you know, private structures. But secondly, the land trust had recommended that we implement a hunting policy. And I'd asked if they would be willing to perhaps send us some samples of a hunting policy. Obviously, having a hunting stand that close to a walking trail is a public safety issue, so. Which could be a no hunting policy. I exactly, but I don't know the first thing. I couldn't find any t hunting policy in our book, so I'm just, I was hoping that somebody might want to give us some guidance as to what, you know, they were, they meant by hunting policy. So if it's possible, could we please, please get this on an upcoming uh, agenda? Okay, I think Mr. Andrews has it, but there are federal state regulations for hunting. As everybody knows, you need permission to hunt on any property. And if it's state property, it should be posted where you can and where you can't. And they have yardage, uh, like you said, if there's a path there, there's supposed to be so many feet away, 500 feet from a road, a dirt road, or paved road. Right. So that's automatic. But so this they need to get up with our, uh, Mr. Burke for conservation to make sure that if that land is ours, you need to either post it 
or they need to be and putting up a stand is I think is illegal on, on anybody's property without permission. Well, that's what I said, but when I when I tried to search for it and I admit I could have missed it, it did not seem like we had any type of guideline for this. So I understand if it's state or federal property there are guidelines, but it doesn't seem that we're him and I may have missed something, but it doesn't seem that we have any guidelines for it and that's what I want to discuss because as Mrs. Begley said, we may decide that there's simply no hunting in these conservation areas, or we may decide that there needs to be a setback, but it, it does need to be addressed before there's a tragedy, because that hunting stand was definitely within the kill zone of someone walking. May I ask a question about that? Yes, go ahead. Is there anything in the conservation restrictions? Or cons it, if, the, if there is... I wasn't able to find it. Unfortunately, no. a lot of that's not that easy to navigate, so. Would a selectman's policy be in order? Well, the next time you're at Walmart, just go to the sporting, do, sporting <laughs> area and Get pick an orange up, vest. No, pick up. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't, I don't think that'll help. I don't think that'll help. With, yeah, right. It's rules and regulations, right. So, uh, so pick up. Pick up the rules and regulation and, and go over that, and then they'll have a starting point because the state has it. Right, but we need to get it on an agenda so we can really talk about okay, it. Okay, I think, I think Mark said he has it on the agenda. Okay. The, uh, yeah, just a comment on that, Mr. Chairman, if I might. I'm going through the, you know, we just approved these minutes. I, I would ask that uh, they go back, uh, could you go back and look at these minutes? Everything that was supposed to be on the agenda uh, never made it. That was on here, Mrs. Winslow. Ago, uh, be put on the uh, March twentieth agenda on the on that issue. Okay, Hunt, and then and then really quick because I know Mr. Andrews has his secret squirrel mission we <laughs> were trying to get to. <laughs> um, One eighteen Sandwich Road can can does is there any new information? The Board of Health has it on their agenda for tomorrow evening. Okay, so perhaps. Uh, the liaison can update us on t next Tuesday as to what I did get somebody stop me this morning, ask me what's going on. Thank you. Any other town business? Anyone else? Secret squirrel. Okay, Mr. Holmes, <laughs> want to continue? Um, um, Sue excuse, business. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Chair skipped over Mr. Andrews. <laughs> I didn't hear you. You skipped over Mr. Andrews for any other town business. <laughs> you all set. Yeah. Anything, yes. uh, anything on the sewer business, Mrs. Begley? You all set? Um, I don't have any The other thing I want to comment on the sewer business, and I can go back to this meeting again, is that we requested that the uh, sewer treatment, Mr. Campino or a representative, be here every week um, giving us an update on the number of, of Connections. Um, if they were supposed to be done, this is the end of March now. Yeah. Right. So we ask that someone be here every week to update the sewer commissioners on the status of the uh, contract to uh, betterment. You know, like to make sure that that happens going forward. Please. Doesn't have to be him. It can be someone else. I think Mr. Andrews has something. Uh, Mr. Any Mr. Other Chairman, business? thank you. Uh, big uh, indulgence given the time. Um, Mr. Clerk, uh, was there something? Uh, yeah, the, bo the board vote. Uh, the, the board voted a couple of weeks ago that uh, we wanted a weekly update from Mr. Campina or a representative as to the status of his counts. He's doing the counts on in terms of the total number right. of. Um, oh, I can't think of the word update, but you know in the connections. Yes. That the total. Total value of the project is going to be divided by, um, and once we know that number, uh, the sewer commissions can be prepared to assign the betterment cost. Now he said he would keep us updated. He was almost done. I think at the workshop, the date he gave us was the end of March, that they should have that completed, um, and we asked for a weekly update. Okay, was there something else, Mr. Clerk? No, that no. that was the big thing. Uh, a <laughs> weekly update on that. And of course, the Westfield, in the Westfield uh, okay. capacity issue, but we've already dealt with. He's okay. not going to be here. He won't be here. He won't be That's here the right. next two meetings. 
Yeah, but he can still have it on the agenda. It will be on the agenda, so. Well, Mr. Chairman, let me just do my thing then. All right, so. All right, so. I don't know. I don't know. So we're all done with liaison? Or what? Or you want to? He's doing his thing. Mr. Chairman. Uh, you, have, you, have to, you have to wear this on at least the front nine. Uh, cause oh, a <laughs> golf shirt. <laughs> and uh, it just reads, and this is uh, just something, a small token of my appreciation for your chairmanship. Uh, chairman, uh, chairman of the board, uh, Walter B. Cruz, senior, 2011-2012. I just wanted to give this to you as a token. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, Mr. Andrews. No. That's, that's, that's for, uh, yeah. Okay, Mr. Liaison reports. I, guess Mr. I, kind, <laughs> I kind of already gave mine um, okay. for the Board of Health, although I want to give one for this Transportation Action Committee. We met today um, at 5 o'clock before this meeting, and the discussion... Um, we kind of talked about what they considered Plan B, but I was calling Plan A. Uh, unfortunately, I had made a motion that Plan B go uh, be brought forward to the school committee and let them um, deliberate and vote on it. Uh, my motion failed. However, after the motion failed, um, Chairman Sweat told me that he would bring it to the school committee. And one of, uh, we kind of went over the transportation revolving account. So that's what supports the transportation department is their non-net, um, it's the contribution from the town and their transportation revolving account. But what I did ask them about was since 2006, um, out of the revolving account, the transportation revolving account, nearly $660,000 has been spent in, the, spent in the purchase of buses. Um, but one of, um, and they were, they were not brand new buses. There were several um, sped vans, et cetera. But one of the, uh, the highlights of the meeting was uh, Mr. Tatro came before the Transportation Action Committee and presented um, some financial scenarios about <laughs> transporting um, only grades K through six. Um, transporting children only that lived greater than two miles from the, the schools, tearing service so they could use fewer vehicles, and the savings um, varied. And then we talked about fee for service. So certainly this is an, um, a, a decision that can be made uh, by the Board of Selectmen. This can only be through the school department. We also discussed apparently some revenue um, is captured by the Transportation Committee by um, contracting out their buses for private parties. So we kind of asked about that. We asked about fees for nonprofits and had those um, fees reflected the increased costs that the transportation department incurs because of fuel, just like anybody else. Even though they get their fuel at um, a s really a slightly lesser cost than we do uh, because they don't have to pay some of the taxes, they have to pay um, not all of the taxes. But some of the savings, um, were significant, uh, however, it would be a significant decrease of services. So I believe that this is gonna be on the school committee's agenda tomorrow, I'm hopeful for that. Uh, but as I, I, and I, and I said this on Saturday at our joint meeting, that the budget, the townside budget reflected, um, much to my alarm, there was already a shortfall with significant cuts that so I would, had you. hoped that the transportation department um, would consider some of some of what they consider Plan B. Audience. Oh 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 oh! Thank so you. I thought it was gaveling me, so I was trying to wrap it up. <laughs> no, no. I won't. I won't I'm do that. I'm a little gavel shy. <laughs> so some of the cuts, um, you know, for fees, I I looked up. I I would. I have requested from Mr. Andrews, um, or the, the, the Transportation Action um, Committee has requested from Mr. Andrews to kind of reach out to town managers <laughs> and um, uh, in the area to see what they have for bus services. We're only 
it's going to be a little bit confusing comparing it to ours. I understand that, but they certainly have a, a budget, something that's budgeted, and they may transport, you know, athletic events, um, extracurricular activities, or still handle their own SPED, their special education um, students. So he's going to reach out to the various communities and see what they do and how creative they've had to become. What it all boils down to is, do we want to charge fees for service? No. Do we want to have tiered starting times? Um, no. But, you know, we can do this, this, this route with 13 fewer buses. I can't answer for the school committee. They have some very, very difficult um, discussions and decisions to make. But on the town side, we're going to have to negotiate kind of scary things coming up. Um, some of the, the budget suggestions have been, you know, fewer seasonal offices, officers, um, closing town hall one day a week, decreasing already um, overburdened staff in town hall. So there's a lot that's going to be coming up that um, I, I hope that the, that the folks in town will be as informed as possible. Any other? That's it. Oh, yeah, I would just, uh, if you wouldn't mind, I'd, I'd like to follow up on that in that um, I don't know how many had the opportunity to, to uh, watch Saturday's meeting but I did notice it was on uh, Wareham Community TV. And I don't know how to follow that schedule along, but if you, if you have an opportunity, um, tune in. Um, it's, it was a lengthy meeting, what were we here, about three hours? Yes. Saturday, yes. a little over three hours. It's a lengthy meeting, um, but if you're a concerned taxpayer or citizen in this town, I recommend that you watch it. Um, and these are not gimmicks or, or reactionary decisions. Um, this document that was handed out represents uh, significant cuts on our town side. These are spelled out very clearly in here pretty much what the cuts are. Um, so there is a list that was given to us by the school committee I did ask on Saturday that they provide the same type of list that we did on the town side. Um, in a lot of the issues on that school list were new people that was pointed out to me earlier. Uh, there are several positions in here that if they don't get uh, the necessary money, there's one, two, three new, new not hired. So these aren't, aren't in my opinion, cuts. These are just avoidance of expenses down the road. Uh, but uh, I'm telling you, it, it's, it's kind of painful to watch, but <laughs> if you have the opportunity to catch that on, on Wayham Community TV, I'd, I would highly recommend it. Thank you. Mr. Winslow. Mr. Chair, I just want to say that um, I think what wasn't really clear during Saturday's meeting is how much work Mr. Andrews and Dr. Rabinovich uh, as well as yourself, Mr. Chair, and, and other people have, have worked to find whatever places they could in these budgets, and none of them are, are places any of us really wants to go. And they, the proposals that we saw on Saturday were a result of many, many hours of hard work and collaboration, and for that they should be commended uh, for that amount of hard work. They took a, what was it, Mr. Andrews, a two-point seven or 2.7 million dollar budget gap and they narrowed it down to about three hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars the cuts are painful it, it's it, that's that's with the two proposed budgets that we had on Saturday that's what mr. Andrews and dr. Rabinovich did that was a collaboration this there's still some processes that have to take shape has, right. to so that's school. if they, I thought that the, they requested a motion that we support debt exclusions and the override and then they, they would provide us with a level funded budget. I didn't no. think that that's where we got to. Did we get there? As, it makes as me part, happy if we got there. As part of the, what the school committee is looking for is that 
the voters get a chance to look at those questions. I, I've, I've explained, and that's why I said we wouldn't oppose, the part of the motion was we wouldn't oppose putting them on the ballot. I don't think it's fair of us as elected leaders to support something like that. I mean, I think that's a decision that needs to be in the hands of the taxpayers. That motion failed, Mrs. Winslow. I understand that. I'm just clarifying, Mrs. Begley, so that people don't misunderstand what the motion was. But I also think that Mr. Andrews and Dr. Rabinovich have worked very hard trying to come up with these numbers, and they've, they've put forth a great effort. And now, because we didn't make any progress on Saturday and we gave no direction to our town administrator, we are back to our $2.7 million budget gap. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, I was gonna say that ends all the liaison reports. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion made adjourn. Second, all in favor? Four zero zero. Thank you very much. Uh, Steve, just a minute here.